I'd like to call the uh, February 26th Nashua Board of Education meeting to order. It is 7.01, and we are at the Nashua High School North Lecture Hall. Could the clerk please call the roll? Mrs. Oden? Here. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Here. Ms. Timmons is not here. Ms. Hohensey? Here. Ms. Van Twyver? Here. Mr. Garino is here. We have six out of eight. We have a quorum. Okay. Thank you. And we will try to reach Mr. Mosier again. Uh, I'm going to have the clerk, clerk read the prayer, and uh, Ms. Raymond will say the Hello. Okay. Hello, Mr. Mosier. We had a hard time getting you. Um, Mr. Mosier is here, yep. and he will be and he will be attending the meeting electronically as he continues his rehabilitation and recovery from surgery associated with a broken hip and edema. Can you hear us, Mr. Mosier? Yes, I can. I can hear you very well. And you are alone in the room. Yes, I am. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, I'd like us to stand for the prayer, and before the prayer, I would like to take a moment to uh, observe a moment of silence for those victims of the uh, Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, all those who lost their lives, those who were injured, and the survivors in all of the community. So if we could stand. Thank you. Almighty God, we have the high honor and the serious duty of managing the educational institutions of our beloved city. In our common endeavors, may we find a spirit of unity and understanding, which will enable us to face our multiple problems with an objective mind, with justice and charity for all, so that any and all decisions made by us will be for the betterment and greater happiness of all of our fellow citizens. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And um, the first thing we have a presentation from Barrett Christina from the New Hampshire School Board Association. Welcome, Mr. Christina. Uh, right over there would be fine. Thank you. I apologize. Our superintendent and our business administrator are not here. Right I'm sorry. Um, they're at a budget meeting at City Hall for the teacher's contract, so. Understood. But thank you for coming and visiting with us. Uh, thank you again, Madam Chair, and thank you, members of the Nashua School Board. Uh, for those I haven't had a chance to meet previously, my name is Barrett Christine. I'm the Executive Director of the New Hampshire School Boards Association. Um, I'm here to talk uh, tonight um, just about some of the NHSBA services and in hopes that uh, the Nashua School Board may reconsider uh, rejoining the New Hampshire School Boards Association. Uh, Nashua School Board was a long-standing member um, of our association for a number of years. Um, I understand um, that for a variety of reasons, the Nashua School Board has chosen to not renew its membership a few years ago. Um, but I just wanted to talk, uh, I've, I've had some conversations with Dr. Mosley uh, since he was appointed superintendent back in July um, about what NHSBA might be able to do relative to providing service to the Nashua School Board. Um, and hopes that you may uh, reconsider joining our association. As some of you know, the New Hampshire School Boards Association is a private nonprofit organization. 
uh, that uh, provides membership services to approximately 160 school boards uh, across the state. We provide services to about 750 school board member, individual school board members across the state. Most of the services that we provide are in the areas of uh, uh, legal information and legal guidance. We have a staff attorney who answers phone calls from school board members and superintendents all day long and any and all matters relative to, to school board governance and, and school district operations. Um, Ms. Van Twyver, I know you and I have talked uh, many times about uh, school board policies, and I caught the, the tail end of your policy meeting here as well, too, uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, NHSBA uh, is the, um, uh, the, the primary source for, for providing uh, sample school board policies and providing policy guidance to school boards. As I think everybody on this uh, school board knows, um, policies and school board policies are, are a vital aspect of school board governance, and, and we see more and more policy regulations and requirements coming from the federal, leg federal uh, legislation, state legislation, Department of Education. So uh, we provide a lot of policy services as well, too, in terms of providing sample templates, in terms of providing policy reviews, and in terms of providing uh, new sample policies if and when the legislature dictates that local school boards have, have new policies or, or adopt laws that, that implement, uh, or excuse me, that, that, that impact uh, local school board policies. Um, we also do provide legislative advocacy on behalf of school boards um, at the New Hampshire legislature. Um, the policy positions that are taken by the New Hampshire School Boards Association um, at the New Hampshire legislature are determined um, by our members um, in a democratic process. Any member that's a, a me any school board that is a member of the New Hampshire School Boards Association um, can propose resolutions uh, that are discussed at our annual delegate assembly each January. Um, those resolutions are uh, fully uh, discussed debated and then voted upon by our members. And uh, so it's our, the, the positions we take the New Hampshire legislature are, are purely um, member driven um, by school boards across the state. Um, last, um, and one of the things that I know I've talked to Dr. Mosley about um, the last number of years is NHSBA uh, provides training services to, to school boards. Um, we provide a handful of training opportunities um, at our office in Concord, um, pretty much one a month. We have an ongoing Right to Know Law webinar series uh, uh, that we just implemented this year. We're pleased to see uh, that getting off the ground and trying to provide more and more webinar-based training opportunities, um, recognizing that it's not always an easy trip um, up to Concord for all of our members. Um, and more importantly, we provide uh, additional uh, individual training to any member school board upon request. Um, either myself or our staff attorney or another NHSBA staff member is happy to come down and provide um, training on any topic relative to, to school board governance um, and school district operations. Um, and, uh, what I think we're most proud about, though, too, is our, uh, our trainings, uh, uh, the individual trainings. Um, if the National School Board were to ask NHSBA to come down and provide um, training on any topic, it's, it's absolutely free of charge. There's, there's no additional charge beyond member dues. Um, you know, we're, we're pleased to provide that as a, as a general member service. Those are the four primary services that NHSBA um, provides, um, but more than that, um, you know, we are able to provide whatever services um, our local school boards need. Um, if it's not part of our standard menu, if you will, of our traditional normal services, uh, we're adaptive enough to be able to put together training materials, to put together policies, to put together resources um, that we're able to provide uh, to our members um, to, meet, to meet their basic needs. Uh, though we have 160 school boards that are members of NHSBA, we recognize that each school board has its own unique um, personality, if you will, its own distinct needs. The needs in Nashua are different than the, the needs in Colebrook, and the needs in Hinsdale are different than the needs in Portsmouth, um, but we're proud um, to be able to provide a variety of services to a variety of members. So um, with that, I, I, I wasn't exactly sure what you, else you wanted me to do. I know Dr. Mosley talked to, uh, talked to maybe just come down and talk a little bit about some of our services. I believe he provided um, uh, the board uh, previously so, uh, some of them, perhaps our training materials. I do have copies of the NHSBA resolutions. I'm happy to leave and, and distribute those. Certainly more information and, and some training documents um, and our resolutions. Um, are, are on our, uh, the NHSBA website um, for public viewing. They're not locked up or behind password protector or anything. So uh, there's plenty more information on our website if you have any other questions about who we are and what we do and the services that we provide.
Would you mind taking a couple of happy questions? To, happy to answer any questions. Is there anybody who has any questions? I, I have one. Um, recently, we received uh, an invitation to go to a workshop from the School District Governance Association of New Hampshire, which, uh, from my research, is a, a fairly new organization. Can you tell me, are you the two only governance associations in the state? Sure. Um, just to be clear, the organization that you speak of does not represent school boards. They represent, um, I believe, individual elected officials. Um, I, I'm, beyond that, I'm not overly familiar with what sort of training or services that they provide, but I do know that they are not um, a school board member-driven organization. I believe they're a collection of individuals um, who gather for whatever their stated purpose may be. Okay, thank you. Um, could you just tell us a little bit about your fee structure? Our fee structure, certainly. Um, our fee structure is based in our bylaws. I'm happy to get a copy of that to you if you would like. Um, I, I will admit it is um, a bit outdated. The problem with that is changing the bylaws is a difficult process. It takes a, a vote of the entire body. Um, I am proud to say that our fee structure has not changed. Um, well, the fee structure itself has not changed in a number of years, but NHSBA has not raised dues in about nine years. Um, so the dues, if you were to rejoin NHSBA, would be exactly the same as they were nine years ago. Uh, we pride ourselves on being friskly prudent. We pride ourselves um, on um, watching our pennies, um, and we're able to provide quality services um, without having to impact our, our local members, recognizing that, especially in communities like Nashua, budgets are tight, um, and, and you know, NHSBA is not going to be in a position where we're raising our dues when school districts are laying off staff. We simply won't do that. Okay. Um, but the, the, the old fee structure was basically based on um, a complicated formula having to do with um, the appropriation size or the appropriation amount of each of our members, how much that local school board raised and appropriated locally. Can you give us some idea of what it would be for national? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. Um, I, I did provide that um, to Dr. Mosley. Okay. Um, base membership dues are approximately $6,900 per year. Um, and we do offer um, a, um, a policy subscription service. Actually, I think that's a little bit high. Excuse me. I think it was closer to $6,700 per year. Um, and we do, uh, we do offer our, our policy subscription service is an additional $450 per year. Um, and I apologize, I don't have um, a copy of that invoice with me. I know I did provide it to Dr. Mosley prior. I think the total amount of dues, basic membership fees, um, plus the policy subscription was about $7,200 per year. Okay. Um, and some of the training, we do have some additional add-on costs. For example, um, if you asked NHSBA to do a policy review for that, um, that would be an, that's an additional four fee service that NHSBA provides. Um, and some of the trainings that we provide um, in Concord are currently $45 per head. Um, but I am uh, I'm re-examining the fee structure for what we do um, for our on-site trainings at, in Concord and, and our webinars and whatnot. I'm thinking of, um, this is, don't hold me to this please, but NHSBA is considering a, um, a season ticket, if you will, based on the number of school board members each individual board has, where you know a five-member board might pay $300. You can come as often as you want or as infrequently as you want, and so on and so forth. Stagger that based on the size of the board. But I also envision that um, rolling all the trainings that we do in Concord as well as all the webinars that we provide as well, too. Okay. Thank you. Thank Does you. anybody else have any questions? Ms. Van Fiver. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate you on your promotion. Thank you. When I was working with you, it was a, uh, a real pleasure. I enjoyed most, uh, uh, not most, but all of the workshops that I attended, and most importantly, the templates for for the policies. Do you, I, I, I'm not the policy chair anymore, um, but uh, we were supposed to be reviewing our policies every four years. Um, and do you, um, I've never known the State Department of Education to come down to re see if we're doing what we're supposed to. Um, I want to know if that has ever, if you've experienced them doing that, and if you are the person that could help us if we should get, uh, they, if they should come down. Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. Um, 
Yeah, and thank you for the kind words. I appreciate I appreciate that greatly. Um, yeah, it's my understanding that the Department of Education, um, when they're doing their school approval site visits and audits, if you will, um, and I believe each school in the district is on, I think it's a five-year cycle. Some of the administrators may know that better than I would. Um, they're not going to look through your entire policy manual. They're not going to look to make sure you have every single policy required by law. It's my understanding that when they do those audits, they'll 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 look for some. They'll you know they'll pull a handful and see what you have in there. To the extent that the Department of Education did an audit and found you deficient or found you to be lacking in some of those that are required by law, absolutely NHSBA would be there to provide services, to provide the templates, and to work through whatever specific policy language the Nashua School Board um, desired to put in. Um, you know by working through its committee and then up to the board and whatnot. But yeah, we, that's certainly one of the services that we provide. Mm, I've been lucky. I escaped any <laughs> comments from the Department of Education, but it's been bothering me on... Certainly. You know, there's over 240, I think, we have here in this... That in sounds this. about right. There are, pro there are approximately 60 or 70 or so that are required by either state and federal law, um, and then NHSBA has probably, you know, another 150 that we categorize as quote-unquote recommended. That's We recommend school boards have those policies in place. And Ms. Van Twyres, I'm sure you probably remember we have hundreds of what we categorize as optional policies. Generally, we keep those on, on hand just on the off chance a, a school district or a school board asks if we have a policy on X or a policy on Y or a policy on Z. I know I ran into one policy that you were doing for California, which I don't think has hit this side of the, uh, the country yet. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I found it just your search... Uh, routine, finding information um, in the policies that overlap each, you know, policy was excellent. Thank you. I, Thank you. And, and the templates, I just think they're well worth the $450 subscription. Thank well you. worth it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I believe Ms. O'Hensey and then Ms. Kaufman. Thank you. I was wondering if you could get us the 2016-990 report before we decide in our budget. Um, process just so that we can know um, a little bit more about the organization and also I'd like an update on there was a problem um, that you failed to file as a lobbyist in 2017 I was told by the house a member of the house of the house education committee I was like to know the status of that um, situation I'm just making some notes here, Ms. Owen, see. Thank you. Um, um, as, uh, to your second question, first failing to file as a lobbyist for 2017, NHSB, all our filing reports are online. I can double check and see. Um, but I'm reasonably certain that I, NHSBA and I myself did file as a lobbyist. I file quarterly reports as required by state law. I, I know they're online and I, first I heard from a representative and I looked online and I didn't see anything for 2017 and then I double checked with um, a member of the House Education Committee. So um, he told me that there was a, f a complaint filed. I just wanted... I have not received any complaints relative to that. Uh, I, I file quarterly reports as a lobbyist as is required by state law. Yeah, okay. And those are all available online. I'm happy to get those to you. Right. I, I, on the Secretary of State's website, I can I'll look for those. Thank you. Mr. Kaufman. Thank you. Um, right now in our policy committee... Right now in our policy committee, we're debating minutes in meetings. So I just have a generic type best practice related question, if I may. Do you believe it is a best practice for a school board to arbitrarily limit the length of its meetings, or do you believe the meeting process is a rather dynamic and it's rather dynamic and should adjust to the needs of the body at the time of the event? I just want to make sure I understand your question, Mr. Kaufman. Arbitrary limit the time of the meeting? The, the length of the meeting. The length of a meeting. So say we're going to meet for two hours, and after that we're going to either stop or continue on by um by by vote. by vote of the board yes um i've never had occasion to to to, to consider that 
Um, I believe an agenda is set forth. I believe you know, it would be prudent to work through the agenda the extent possible if you reach a point in the meeting where you're not either getting through the agenda or um, the discussion has become unproductive. It may be prudent to stop that meeting. I don't know of any board, I've never heard of any board, let me put it that way, um, that I've dealt with that sets a time limit on a specific meeting and then cuts it off at that point. Is that a best practice? I mean, as I first mentioned, I think every personality, every board has its own personality. I don't think I would specifically recommend that you put a time length on a meeting and then have to vote to extend after that. Thank you. Um, I have something to say. Okay, Mr. Mosier. Yes, I would just uh, like to comment on what uh, uh, Mr. Kaufman was just saying. You know, if you look at the uh, the proposal on limiting the uh, uh, the uh, the time on a thing, this was uh, targeted to the uh, subcommittees, not the uh, not the major uh, board meetings. So you better check that and, and make sure you're you're on solid ground. But I'd like to comment to uh, uh, Mr. Christina that. Uh, you know, I'm one of the uh, the ones I've been on the board for some time, and uh, you know, I can remember going back, you know, ten, twelve years, and uh, you know, the, the uh, getting the uh, the uh, updates from the uh, from the school board association, and uh, while I was on the uh, policy committee. And uh, worked with uh, three different uh, people as uh, chairs on the policy committee. <clears throat> and uh, we found that the, uh, these updates were very, very helpful. And to give you an example, we would get an update on it, and we would uh, check it to see uh, what was required by law and if we were in compliance. If we weren't, uh, and there was a change that was uh, due to that particular policy, we would work on that and review and revise the policies that we had so that we were in compliance. And uh, that way there we were satisfied that our work has done, and then we could go on and review other policies as proposed. So I think that, uh, you know, the help that you gave us in direction and uh, and with the uh, the sample policies was uh, so good and so helpful that it saved us a lot of time and a lot of effort in the uh, in the time we spent uh, in the uh, committee hours. So thank you very much. It was very uh, very good. And, Happy to have uh, work with you. Okay. Thank you, sir. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Mosier. Is there anybody else? Mr. Kaufman? Thank you. Uh, to continue. So I appreciate, Mr. Mosier, your clarification. So, Mr. Christina, so I kept my comment very generic when I asked about its meetings. So I was referring to both board and committee meetings, but as Mr. Mosier mm -hmm. pointed out, so I just will ask you specifically, uh, can you can you extend your comment relative to Board of Ed meetings as a whole, as we are tonight, or as we were earlier as a committee? Sure, I I I, I think my response would, would would be the same, Mr. Kaufman. I think you set the whether it's the committee or the board sets an agenda. Um, presumably, you put on the agenda the amount of work that you think you can get through in a quote unquote typical meeting. Um, and you do your best to try and get through that. Um, and if you, like I said, if, the, if you get to a point where you have not completed the work that's been listed on the agenda, but yet the meeting is becoming unproductive for whatever reason, perhaps you, you close the meeting at that time. But setting a specific amount of time on a committee meeting or a board meeting, um, I suppose it may be more common at a committee meeting just based on other people's schedules and times and time of day that you're meeting and other availability, work obligations, child obligations, things of that nature. Um, but so there may be some difference between the two for a full board meeting 
No, I don't know if I'd necessarily just put a, a specific time limit on the amount of meeting. For a committee meeting, again, depending on what time of day you were meeting, meeting you may have to just based on, on other people's schedules and needs and things of that nature. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Ben Fiver. Um, I have a question about how you come about to develop the uh, policies. I know that you do it on statutes from the uh, House of Committee or whatever, but how many how many um, lawyers are working on it? Or and and I that's one of the things that I liked so much about it was that we didn't have to bother our lawyers. Certainly, uh, that you people have vetted it most of. You know, they come down clean almost. Certainly. Um, we, we use a variety of resources um, and a variety of source materials when we're developing our sample policies. If it is the policy is in response to um, a state law or a state Department of Education regulation, NHSBA will collaborate with other attorneys across the state, will collaborate with other school board members, will collaborate with other administrators to come up with draft template language. Um, if it is a policy, um, say one of the optional policies that is being developed in response to member feedback and request, um, because NHSBA is an affiliate of the National School Boards Association, we're able to tap into the resources of 50 other state school boards associations, 50 other organizations doing policy work, 50 other sets of attorneys, 50 other you know resources across the state where we can send out an email on a listserv, does, does anybody else have a sample policy on X? And through that research, we can look and see what other states are doing, and then we can develop and modify our own to meet New Hampshire's unique local needs. Do those policy go out to, a new policy go out to all the members of the School Board Association for approval, or? No, they're, de they're developed in-house by NHSBA, and then we send them out to our members as template language for local school boards to tweak, modify, edit, as they, as they see fit, again, recognizing that the policy needs in Nashua may be different um, than they are in Colebrook, and the policy the school board in Nashua may have um, a different desire relative to a policy than, than the Colebrook School Board, for example. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Kaufman. Thank you. This is going to be a tough question. Okay. I'm just going to set you up. I want you to know. I think it's the most difficult question I've ever encountered in dealing with policies for my on my two years on the board, so I'm just setting you up. I want you to know it. Certainly. Okay, here it comes. I think everybody in this room who's ever dealt with a policy has this question. Can you please explain? You know where I'm going. Pol the difference between policy and regulations? No, no, yeah. not even there. Oh. The source of those crazy three or four letter mnemonics <laughs> that are used, that, that, and can you explain that, the logic that, behind the naming? That, Thank you, Mr. Coffin. Okay, I, I mean, <laughs> that, no. that is, that's a great question. Um, I'm, I'm glad you're laughing about it. Well, it, you it have to. It absolutely drives some people it, nuts. If you deal with it enough, it doesn't I, make you crazy. I, I, sure, certainly. Um, without passing the buck, I will say that I did not develop that. I inherited that. It's my understanding that that policy coding system has been around for about 40 years. I believe it was developed, don't quote me on this, I believe it was developed by the National School Boards Association or some sort of committee or wing that the school, the National School Boards Association put together, I think, <coughs> if I remember correctly, um, it was the mid or late 70s when more and more school district regulation was coming down and more and more policies were being required of local school boards. Um, as I believe, you, you, do you, use, you don't use the number system, you use the letter system, correct? We have so, a lot of leftovers, though. Yeah, so section A, each section has its own sort of head topping, as I'm sure you know. Section A is, I think, broad philosophical statements of the board. Section B is board operations. Section, section C is administration. Section D is finance. E is facilities, I believe. F is forget what F is, G is staff and, and personnel, J is students, I is instruction, K is community relations, and L is something else, which I, which I forget at this time. Ideally, there's, there is some logic or some sequence to that. So for example, policy BA may be board operational, whatever it may be, but then BAA is supposed to be sort of tied into, related to what BA may be, but a subset of BA, and then you'd move on to BB, but BBB would be a subset of BB. Okay. 
you see you see where I'm where I'm going with this. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes when we put together sample policies or put out a new one, there's really nowhere it fits and you have to kind of get creative with it. When you started your answer, I thought you were going to say it was going to be developed by the military during World War II. <laughs> no. um, the other thing, too, to remember, Mr. Kaufman, is that it's th those, those coding letters are not set in stone. They're designed to be a little flexible. So, you know, NHSBA does a handful of policy reviews. We probably do five or six a year for local school boards. You know, your policy, you know, BB might be somebody else's BF, and it just so long as there's some flow to it, but it's not set in stone by any means. When I looked at, I thought of, thought of them similarly to what you just described, but also as a sort sequence. In other words, I can force them in a specific order alphabetically where I no longer have a numeric uh, scale. So. Correct, yeah. Okay, thank you. I, that, I, I had to ask <laughs> since you were absolutely. here. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Anybody else? I want to thank you, Mr. Christina, for yeah. coming down and, and giving us a, a synopsis of what you offer. Uh, and I believe Mr. Uh, Superintendent Mosley will be getting back to you. But thank you so very much for your time. Thank you Appreciate so much. Thank you for the opportunity to come down and speak with the National Nashua School Board. Uh, if, uh, if there are any other remaining questions, by all means, feel free to, to get in touch with me or have Dr. Mosley get in touch with me. And uh, hopefully um, we can work together uh, again soon. NHSBA is certainly looking forward to that opportunity. I, I do have one last question. Sure. How long have you been, uh, how, how long has the New Hampshire School Boards Association uh, been in business? Sure. NHSBA... Um, I believe it was incorporated in 1946. Okay. Um, I've been with NHSBA personally since 2005, um, serving a variety of roles. I started out as a staff attorney. Um, I've been director of policy services. I've been governmental relations chief trainer and now executive director. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. We Thank really you. do appreciate your Thank you very much. Your, appreciate your time. the opportunity. Thank you. Okay. And now we move on to the consent agenda. Uh, is there anything that needs to be removed from the consent agenda? Mr. Kaufman? Yes, I'd like to I move to uh, remove the policy committee minutes of February 2nd, sorry, February 20th, 2018. Okay. Um, would you like to speak to that as to why you'd like them removed? Yes, in, in brief, um, the minutes of that policy committee meeting are not available online and are, let me, I have remarks for that. So let me just be specific what I want to say. So the, um, under policy BEDB, it says that committee recommendations shall be taken directly from the motions found in the draft minutes of the meeting. If the draft meet, meeting minutes are unavailable. Inclusion of the recommended motions for that committee report shall be referred to the following board meeting. So since they are not available uh, when we receive the packet or over the weekend, I ask that they be brought forward, essentially tabled to the next meeting. Okay. I believe we did this last month as well. So <laughs> makes okay. sense to me. Okay, so we'll make sure that happens. Thank you. Thank you. February 20th policy okay uh so so the minutes the and that would the also be true committee meeting of february 28 20, 20th 2018 has been removed from the consent agenda and mrs odin that would also apply to the recommendations further along in the agenda uh from that same policy meeting on february 20th Before. so all those policies would have to be tabled essentially to the next meeting as well i think when you take the minutes off that automatically happens because those motions are in the minutes to, okay thank you i just wanted to be clear okay. in case anybody watching when okay. what was going on thank you uh any communications outside the agenda um Ms. we didn't vote on that and i had another one i wanted to pull oh okay i'm sorry what did you want to pull um the communications, um, there's a policy, BEDB-R, that says copies of communications directed to the board shall be included in the agenda for the meeting and read by title only unless the rules are suspended. 
I've got a copy of an old agenda where we actually listed, we have a list of all the communications by date, um, sender, and subject matter. And it would alleviate a lot of confusion, confusion like we had this week over a miscellaneous um, communication that was put in our packet. And I spoke with uh, Ms. Kinsella, and she was very helpful in clarifying <coughs> where that communication was put. It was going to be um, communications off the consent agenda. But if we had the list, like our policy says, and like we used to do, that problem would be alleviated. It also would be more transparent for the public to see um, what letters were sent to the board. Some might be of interest to them unless they see them you know, listed. They really don't know that they exist. When I, when I read the communications, I see email correspondence list sent by email. Uh, and I have two items to be added under communication outside the consent agenda. And I think one is the letter you're referring to. Right. But what I'm saying is we used to have a long enumerated list in the agenda mm -hmm. according to this policy. We have the date, the, the author, and the subject. And I think that was part of our agenda preparation to include that list. And it would have clarified this confusion this past week. Okay, we'll check into that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, items, items, communication outside the consent agenda. We had uh, an anonymous, anonymous letter from a parent. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we still did not vote on the consent oh. agenda. Okay, um, you're right. So, Thank you. I apologize. So move to accept the consent agenda as amended. Second. The removal of the policy committee meetings. And um, I, I, I don't think you want to completely remove the communications, do you, Ms. Hensi? Just a question whether I want the, them all the... I listed and enumerated going forward if we can't do it for okay. this one, that's fine. But in the future, if we can have that list, it will simplify. We'll, we'll check into that. Thank you. So the only thing removed from the consent agenda is the policy committee meeting minutes of February 20th, 2018. I'm looking for a motion to uh, accept the consent agenda with that policy meeting removed. I make a motion to accept the consent agenda with the policy committee meeting minutes from February 20th, 2018 removed. Second. Second. Okay. Third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, roll call. Ms. Uh, Mr. Mosher. Mr. Yes. Um, Mrs. Oden. Yes. Mr. Kaufman. Yes. Um, Ms. Raymond. Yes. Uh, Ms. Timmons is not here. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Uh, the motion carries 7 to 0. Okay. Communication outside the consent agenda. We had an anonymous letter from a parent uh, pertaining to the uh, February 12th board meeting concerned about... Um, the behavior of members. Uh, I will say uh, I did ask Corporation Council. I could have read it tonight, but I think it sets a bad, a bad precedent and a dangerous precedent to read anonymous letters in public. Uh, and I will say if that person would like to sign the letter and send it in again, I will read it. But I did make copies of the letter, and I had it put in all the packets for board members, so every board member has seen that, that letter. We also have uh, a letter that came from the School District Governance Association of New Hampshire inviting us to go to a workshop. So uh, those are the two items I have that are communications outside the consent agenda. Madam okay. President. Madam President. Yes. I would like to object to, for that uh, anonymous letter to be kept and placed on file because I, I think it's a dangerous precedent for um, 
sending us anonymous emails and accepting them. Um, it, you know, criticizes three board members by name and it doesn't give the person making the criticism. Also, I believe our policy would have to be overridden by a two thirds vote, um, BEDB-R, if you're gonna read the policy um, out loud because it says read by title only. So we'd have to overturn that policy in order to read. The, the well, I just said I was not going to read it. I thought I understand. it was a bad precedent. But you said if they gave a, their name that you would read it, it would still require a vote. Okay, well. We so will, are we making sure that, is this? We would make sure that we have the two thirds. I don't want this kept on file without a name. I don't want to accept and place on file. So I'm objecting to that if that is what is done under communications from outside the consent agenda. I, w I will check with Corporation Council before doing that because I was told, I went down this week, and I was told that legally we could read that. So I will check with Corporation Council. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, moving along. We have a public question comment period limited to items on this agenda. 15 minute time limit if possible. Excuse me, Mrs. Oden, just as a point of order. I, th I think not everybody who may want to speak knows to sign in. So if you would like to sign in and speak, there's a sign up form over there if you haven't already done so. Thank you. Good evening, Robert Hollowell, Six Chaucer Road. Um, definitely a different angle here than I'm used to. Um, so just to be clear, I'm going to make some comments about the minutes that I uh, read for the budget meetings, so that's why it's something that's on the agenda. So the first thing I'd like to address um, is the ELL discussion that was had, and specifically some items that were on page 13. Um, you may recall before I left the board, I commented that in looking at the ELL data where we see a spike in the number of students not passing the test, that if you looked prior to the changes in the test, those students were doing better than the average students in Nashua. Now there was some claim made that the reason they changed the cut score on that exam was because um, there were students that weren't meeting that. Now the ELL test that we take is a national level test, so that may be true somewhere else not true for Nashua. But I just want to highlight a few of the comments that Mr. Chopa made um, when asked about that particular data. And this, so this is him quoting. And around the state they said, well, the data that we have isn't any good. So we can't base anything off of what we had because the first year kids weren't comfortable with technology and the second year they changed the standards. And then on top of all that, because it's an online test, it's not scored locally. A lot of the kids are mysteriously missing speaking scores or writing scores. We don't even know what's going on or why we're getting these results. And it's not just Nashua, it's the entire state. <clears throat> and then later on he says, the data is so loopy from missing scores and all the different factors. Even advocates who understand where we are from ELL folks across the state aren't comfortable using the data we have to make changes. And the reason I bring that up is because it is being used to make changes. It's being used to drive the number of ELL teachers that this district believes that it needs. And in the comment that was made about those statistics, it, the, the administration is saying, well, this is the first year of many years of adding teachers. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that more ELL teachers wouldn't be advantageous to ELL students, but all of this comes down to prioritization. So the question is, are you, what level do students need to get at before they can test out? I would argue the state has done this entire district and apparently the entire state a disservice by the way they've implemented the test and the cut scores at the same time. We can't seem to get any answers from the state regardless of letters that were sent. Um, I would urge this, school district to push that notion back to the state and, and figure out what they're going to do. I look at it and say, 
Our kids did not get stupider in one year. And in one year, you see a dramatic increase in the number of students who are no longer testing out of the test. It just doesn't make statistical sense that that's happening. So I would urge the district to look into that further. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I've talked a little bit about the policy BEA and BDE that are up about limiting times of meetings. I will point out that um, I'm the first speaker here. You're 47 minutes into a meeting that you're gonna limit to two hours. Now, when I was board president, I could tell you I would have killed for a policy that told me we had to end in two hours because there were a lot of times that we just went on and on. But the bottom line is the majority, and the, and the issue we had there was we didn't have a majority of the board that was willing to cut off debate. If you cut off debate, you can make meetings run far more efficiently. You have to get a majority of the board to agree to do that. I would at least urge that if this board is really going to consider a 120 minute time length, that you've either got to remove items such as somebody coming giving a, a talk to you in the beginning, um, or you shouldn't make it a two thirds vote. That, that is really what you're going to end up doing is you'll have a minority of people that will get annoyed over and over again. And that's not good for a board either. And I guess whenever I think about these policies, I always try to put myself in the position of, well, what if I was the minority member? Would I want that? You know, do I want it so that a majority of the board can't vote to extend a meeting? I would also say that the language in here doesn't make any sense to me because at one point you're saying the board members may make the determination the length and the time of the meeting by 30 minute increments with majority vote to conclude a specific topic being discussed. And then the very next line says, the additional 30 minute extension shall require a two thirds vote to continue the meeting. I, I don't know which one it is, um, but it can't be both. <clears throat> um, I assume that the document that was put in the agenda this evening about district security procedures is, is due to Ms. Van Twyver's question about why uh, board member badges were disabled at um, all schools except for here and at Ledge Street. Um, I guess I'll just say from my reading of it, if you look under employee identification item number seven, it's pretty clear that they should have access to all the schools. So I'm hoping we'll get some transparency on why that decision was made or why it was done. <clears throat> From the February 8th budget meeting, I'm just gonna quote something that Dr. Mosley said. Um, I met with the mayor and Mr. Donovan yesterday and we are part of a divisional budget process. That means that all the Dep Nashua departments meet with the mayor and give a very similar presentation. Then there's a discussion around adjustment, around what the district needs, and more importantly, our challenges. And I, I read that because I, I want, I know there's a lot of new board members here, there's new people to the district. So in Nashua, we're a semi-autonomous board. And what that means is the mayor and the city can then set our overall budget, but they can't tell us what to add or what to subtract. If we want to add kindergarten and do away with something else, Nobody at the city level can tell us to do anything different. And so we're not actually a division of the city. We're a semi-autonomous board. And so it is your responsibility to decide what the line items should be. And in the past, <clears throat> other than um, the mayors um, typically have a uh, cabinet level meeting where everybody from the city is, is invited to attend. Um, and it, uh, but at other meetings where you have a meeting with the mayor, we have generally required that at least the board president or some designee be present at those meetings so that the board can have transparency, if you will, on what discussions are being had. Um, and this isn't anything to say about the current mayor. This was a concern when uh, 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 previous mayors have been here. And again, put yourself in the position of a board member who agrees or disagrees with the current administration and what's the conversation going, going on at the city level, right? It shouldn't be the mayor telling us what things to add or subtract from our budget. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, and finally, um, at your budget meetings, and this is from page two, I think, of the first meeting, um, there was a motion made, uh, it's a, a, little, a little convoluted, um, but essentially it was asking the board um, to have a roadmap to get from 3.4% or whatever your final number is down to a number that looks like the mayor's number. And we have historically done that. We've mapped out that path. But I want to make people aware that there's another thing that has to happen there. So number one, you should do that. You should have a path that says, what is it if I get down to 2.1 or whatever the mayor, I think he's gonna be here on the 28th and tell you what he thinks the number should be. Um, if something happens and the Board of Aldermen were not to pass your budget at some level, and, and I'm not saying it's gonna happen, but let's say they said, you can't have more than 1% because they can set your bottom line. You can't mandate that I'm, you know, I'm gonna get 3.4 or 5%. Oh, you want if, to if you don't make a decision now in terms of any teacher reductions, those have to be noticed to the teacher prior to, I think, someday in May, and I can never remember how they calculate it. Um, that has to happen. So if you figure out that in order to go from 3.4 to 2.1, you have to remove some positions, those need to be noticed to them before May. You won't know your final budget. We, we routinely have to do this. So I urge the board to make sure that they understand. It could be you can get to 2.1 without ever having done that. Um, but I kind of suspect that's not true. Um, and I'll throw in one other item. Um, I see that one way that we attempted to save money was to dramatically reduce the technology budget. Um, I think down to $100,000. No? No. All right. Well, I stand. Okay. He's flat this year. That's good then. And the only other, the only other um, item I'll say is I saw Ms. Jingris's um, presentation on the return to learn. and She did a fantastic job and I'm really glad we uh, hired her and she stuck around. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hollowell. Is there well, anybody else? That's I give you. Okay. On top of the TV. A big Mr. Deal. Randall Whitehead. I will. I, I got to get the... Uh, Mr. Mo Mosier, we can hear your personal conversation. Thank you. I'm sorry. I had a question, ma'am. didn't ask a question. Oh, you have a question for us? No, no. It's okay. Thank you. I, I changed my mind. If you give us your name and address. Thank you. Randall Whitehead. I live on uh, 20 Palisade Drive, Nashua. Um, Madam Chair, um, Board of Education members, Dr. Mosley, I uh, appreciate your allowing me to speak this evening. Um, the recent tragedy in Parkland, Florida has moved me to come before you uh, to express my concerns about the security and safety uh, of our students and staff in the Nashua Public Schools. I am a retired educator with 35 years experience as a teacher, coach, and high school athletic director. Most of my time was spent in Chelmsford, Massachusetts. Additionally, I served wards five, eight, and nine as a New Hampshire state representative. Now, for the past two years, I have worked as a substitute teacher off and on here in the Nashua public school system. I have taught in many schools. I have taught at all levels, elementary, middle schools, and the high schools. Teaching in Nashua schools has allowed me to be painfully aware of certain deficiencies relative to security in our schools. I will not, of course, here in a public forum, discuss those specific deficiencies. Madam Chair, it is my sincere belief that we must aggressively address these security lapses. Despite the complexities and the costs of such actions, 
Uh, I know they will impose uh, a hardship on all of us, but in my opinion, we must do so in a timely fashion. To not act to provide adequate protection for our students in these frightful times should not be an option and would be irresponsible. I thank you for your listening to my concerns. Thank you, Mr. Whitehead. Okay. Oh. Superintendent's, superintendent's comments. I'm sorry, we, we have a young man here uh, waiting to uh, present us with his Eagle Scout project. It's the bench at Charlotte Ave, and he's on vacation. He's been here in over an hour now. Uh, could oh. we please I? adjust the agenda so this young man can present his Eagle Scout uh, presentation to the board? Is there any... Does anybody mind that? I think it's a great idea. Okay, thank you. I think that uh, we suspend the rules yes. and make uh, room for him on the uh, on the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Mosier. Do we have a second? second. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Mosher. Yes. Mrs. Oden. Yes. Mr. Kaufman. Uh, Ms. <laughs> What's the question? Suspend the, the rules, rules and uh, allow Mr. Uh, uh, Liam to, to do his presentation. Sorry. Yes. Um, Ms. Timmons? Yes. Uh, did I skip Ms. Raymond? Yes. yes. I mean. I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. So uh, the rules are suspended to allow, um, to allow Liam Snoggles to uh, present for his buddy bench. Thank you. you. Want to come up there and sit there? Thank you. Uh, okay. So before I would like to begin, I would like I have a um, little uh, paper thing. Could you turn uh, on your microphone, please? My microphone? Yeah, it's on. It's on. So if you could, uh, you may. Need, I only made four copies, so you may need to share. Oh, Liam, you have to say your yeah. name. Oh, sorry. Na name and address. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Liam Snoggles from uh, 15 Bradford Street. That's where I, that's my address. Thank you, Liam. So, um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the Board of Education. My name is uh, <coughs> Liam Snoggles from Troop 773. I am an Eagle Scout candidate and a, a freshman student of Nashville High School North. Now, um, there has been a... Um, issue going around with bullying. A lot of us, and maybe if we have children, are have experienced bullying. But, and there has been studies going around about, about, about what bullying. There has been one solution that has proven to work, and that is buddy benches. Here's how it would work. There, let's say little Johnny was out on the playground enjoying himself. And then little Billy and his gang, and little uh, group of friends came and picked on him. Now at this time and time and age, they that he wouldn't little Johnny, he would have nowhere to go. But with buddy benches, he would be able to go to the buddy bench and he would be able to wait there. The teachers would know what was going on and then the students would be able to be like, hey, little Johnny's all by himself. Why don't we have him come with us and he'll be be able to be happy again. Tonight I am here to ask for your help. My plan is to make two buddy benches and pavement art for Charlotte Ave Elementary School to start stomp to start stomp out bullying in a different perspective. What I what I my the buddy benches well, I will be making two of them. I will be making them out of pressure oops, sorry pressure treated wood and be painted green and white of the school colors, and they will be made uh, the base will be made of cement poured into sonnet tubes and have rebar to support them and these are these benches are modeled after um, 
Ben, um, after like, uh, what was it? Uh, city benches, uh, like I was seeing around. And the two pavement arts will consist of a sundial, and it's not the sundial that has like a metal bar in the middle. Instead, the student will stand in the middle of the sundial, and the sun, which, go, which moves across the sky, casts a shadow onto the student. The student's shadow will then land on a certain hour line, and that will be, allow them to tell the time. And then the, and the second uh, art project would be the um, solar system. The solar system would have the student allow the students to learn about the planets and have fun with it. The PTO has agreed to fund the project, and this is Patricia Bolio of the principal of Charlotte F has agreed to it. What I need from you is your permission with a signature saying that you approve of this of this project, so I may proceed to to construction. Oh, thank you, Mr. Greeno. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Madam President. I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve um, the Eagle Scout Buddy Bench uh, and Pavement Project at Charlotte Avenue. Second. And I'd like to speak on the motion. Okay. Second. We look for second. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. Um, Liam was at the um, Finance and Operations Committee meeting, and um, he was there for a long time, and he 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 answered every question. Um, the bench is safe. The uh, the the uh, um, any any cement is going to be in the ground, so there's going to be no danger to the children. This has been done before, in other schools, mm -hmm. and um, so it's it's a great project. Uh, he's he's going to finance it. He has it all financed and he has it uh, designed. And uh, so, uh, what else what else am I missing? But I think um, he covered all the bases. He got permission from the principals. And um, Dr. Mosley is aware of it, and the superintendent is aware of it. So he was he was there at the fi uh, Finance and Operations Committee. Also with Sean Smith and all our finance people were there to to look it over too. So um, so I would recommend that we we pass uh, we we uh, advance this. So. Okay, Mr. Kaufman. Thank you. Uh, absolutely support this. Um, civics in action is what scouting does. Um, this is great for the school. The PTO over at Charlotte Ave School is unbelievable. I, when I was on finance, they came forward with a proposal to raise, this is not an incorrect statement, $250,000 for a playground was it the proposal by the Charlotte Avenue PTO. So if he's got the support of that parent organization, this project is going to fly. Those are great parents. They're fully engaged. You're working with the right people on this. Um, the one thing I would be interested in is once you're up and running and implemented, please invite us to the opening, number one. Okay. But number two, maybe uh, other, scouter, sc other scouts looking for service projects would take this on at other schools because it sounds like it's something that's very easily reproduced. The $500 is not a lot of money for I think what the return on its investment would be. So keep us advised, if you can, in terms of usage. That would be an interesting piece to your puzzle, is if you can monitor usage or at least ask the kids what the, you know, they, they went and they took the risks to sit on the buddy bench. So did someone come over and speak to you? Did you feel better after you were engaged? Because that, that's the real, that's where your real work is happening. It's not about building the bench. You understand that. It's about getting the kid off the bench and talking and playing or doing something with someone else. I, congratulations, good luck, but definitely let us know what happens. Mm -hmm. And if, if you get positive re results, I would like us to consider rolling this out to the other schools as well. Thank you. Ms. Raymond? Thank you. I think this is a lovely idea, um, and I appreciate all of the work that you have put into this. Um, your proposal is extraordinarily professional, um, including a site plan. Um, which was really helpful for me to, you know, envision exactly what you're thinking of. Um, so I am wholeheartedly for this, and I, I thank you um, for your willingness to engage in the community in such a positive way. Thank you. Ms. Hohansi? Thank you. I do think it's a great project. I just wanted to ask you a question. Is Charlotte Ave the elementary school you went to? Charlotte Ave Elementary School is the school that I went to, correct. So this is a great way to give back to that school. Thank you very much. 
I just want to say it's not attached here, but I was very impl impressed with the blueprints you provided us. I think you said your grandfather had helped you with them. Yeah. Yes, my um, my grandfather and I helped us out, helped me actually out with the, with uh, with doing it, and he and I professionally uh, made the blueprints, which if you have the packet, it are shown in there. Okay. Mine didn't have it in it, but it was. Uh, I did see it at the committee meeting, and it was outstanding. So, okay, um, ready for a vote, Mr. Mos Mosier? Did you have anything to add? Yes, I. As a former scout <laughs> myself, I know uh, going from being a tenderfoot to second class and first class, I am well aware of the effort that gets put into these projects. And I wholly support it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ready for a roll call? On the vote, uh, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mrs. Oden? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. The motion passes uh, unanimously. Congratulations. <laughs> um, will there be someone that will be able to sign it? Uh, oh. I think Mr. Garino, as the clerk, do you, thank you. Would you like to sign that document for him? Oh, he or? did. I did. Oh, no, he did. did. He thank did. You. I just didn't know. Okay. My apologies. Thank you all very much for your time tonight. Thank you, and best of luck. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. We'll continue with our agenda to the superintendent's comments. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone's all right. Happy Monday on the nice vacation we have here. A couple things in terms of updates. Um, I we we just returned from the meeting with the alderman around the teacher contract uh, with the finance, and they overwhelmingly passed that. So now it's going to go to the full alderman uh, board. So that's very exciting. So thank you for all the support from the mayor's office. Thank you from the alderman. I really appreciate that. I feel like it was a, a long process for us. Uh, I want to publicly thank the administrative team, Dan Donovan, uh, Dana O'Gara, board members that were involved in this uh, project. So thank you so much. Um, just a couple of things. March is here. It's hard to believe that. It's hard to believe that the, you know, the warm weather is just about us. And uh, anytime we talk about March or think about March, we tend to think a little bit about uh, accreditation and so uh, the National High School South will be going through its accreditation visit from NIAS and that will actually start on March 25th through the 28th if you will recall if you look at your calendars yes March 25th is a Sunday so there's a reception for that and I will be there and uh, invitations are going to go out to the board members to uh, if you want, you can attend that reception of the NIAS Visiting Committee. NIAS is accreditation committee that comes and visits our, our high schools and goes through our program and our process, go through, our, excuse me, it reviews our programs, uh, facilities and leadership and all those good things that go with the accreditation process. So the, the ceremony will begin on March 25th and go through the 28th. Um, excuse me, we had an Ask Me meeting um, for negotiations that we just started off on February 21st. It was a preliminary meeting uh, involving Mr. Clausen, myself, uh, Ms. Timmons, uh, Mr. Uh, Donovan, and we just basically talked, you know, basically we're at uh, ground zero a little bit. You know, we do have a couple of TAs, right? Um, but we're certainly having that dialogue and, you know, we're committed to making sure that uh, the custodians and our support staff around the custodians um, get a, a, a contract. Um, so we started that process. On President's Day on February 19th, we had an in-service for our faculty. Uh, that in-service included uh, a professional development on our state assessments, that's uh, SAS, that's a state assessment system. We had some uh, feedback from the state around special education monitoring program, so we had some teachers participating in that. Um, for our high schools, we started the NIAS piece and preparing for that. We had the kindergarten assessment tool that we reviewed with our, with our faculty, and so it was a very, very productive day. I want to thank Dr. McKinney, um, our Donna Fitzpatrick, who is, by the way, under the weather tonight, so that's why she's not here, for all their work um, 
and, and their commitment for that day. It's never easy to pull off those days only because there's so much planning and coordination that needs to take place. I'd like to speak to Mr. Whitehead's concern, and for, first of all, thank you for the email. Thank you for reaching out to me. I appreciate that. I also want to acknowledge the parents who have also sent me emails around school safety. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your feedback, and I want you to know as superintendent that I'm committed to making sure that everyone follows the process entering the building and leaving the building. Uh, we are always and will continue to review our our policies around and, and procedures around safety. I think it's a very healthy thing to continue that, that dialogue. I just want to add that uh, the schools have been in contact with the fire, the police, the rescue. I know Chris Lassard is here right now. I also want you to know that part of this process about school safety, we've also included and we are going to include public health and really about kids and people's social emotional pieces and how they're pro progressing. I think it's important that yes, we can certainly drill, we can certainly prepare for, you know, God forbid, that, that, that event. But there are also some other active things that I believe the district and we can do as partners to really reach out to those kids or really identify those kids and those individuals who are on the fringes, who, who are struggling with mental health and certainly get them the, 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 excuse me, the support they need. So in some ways it's a larger, it's the gamut of being you know, prepared, God forbid, an event that you need to do, you need to evacuate a building, but also too, working with people with their mental health and getting those individuals support as well. So we're, we're consistently, we are going to work with all the emergency response to make sure that we are prepared in the event that that happens. Part of that preparedness is that we can't publicly share what we're doing. It's a safety matter, it's confidential. So understand that if we don't have available like the safety routes to where kids are gonna go, that's not to in any ways um, to use a word that was used earlier, not to, we're not trying to hide anything or not be transparent. We actually want to protect our kids and we want to make sure that that information is, is used in the schools and not necessarily used against us, God forbid. So thank you for all of the parents who have sent me emails, who have called me. I'm working on the emails. I probably got about 50 emails coming at me. So I'm working through the emails. If I haven't responded to you, then I will certainly get back to you uh, within this week. So, um, oh, um, we have, um, thank, we have a, Ms. Van Twyver sent some information to my office around acknowledging the mayor's program. Uh, there's an internship program that the mayor has started in conjunction with the schools. I, I'm very pleased that we are a part of this and thank you Mayor Donches and his faculty Tim Cummings. I wanna also acknowledge Bob Chopa for his work and you know, when I first started here in the summertime, the mayor's office really reached out to myself and to, and to other divisions within the city and said, how can we get our youth involved? How do we get them engaged? What are some active things that we can do? And so we all had an opportunity to kind of share some perspectives in some different things that might attract some of our kids to get involved and maybe get a summer job and, uh, so we kind of went around and around, and finally, you know, what you see in front of you is certainly something that is very attractive in a way where our kids would um, would work in different divisions within the city of Nashua. They'd have the opportunity to to um, shadow professionals, and I'd certainly more than willing. I don't know if anyone wants to shadow me. My life is pretty pretty you know dull, but we'll work at work. May make it work. Maybe we might. The only thing that's going to happen on Friday is that we're going to go to Netflix. We're probably going to go to um, Lilac, Lilac Luster. Is that a Chinese place up there? Lilac Blossom. Blossom, that's it. Um, oh, yeah. And we'll go to TJ's on Friday. I like their, their Italian subs. For the rest of the time, we'll be working here in the schools and, and having fun. So if you want to shout on me, you're more than happy to do so. At any rate, uh, I want to commend Mayor Donches for his um, commitment to working with the schools and, and really uh, Kim Kleiner for all of her hard work and working with us and really creating this paid internship for our kids. It's all about the kids, it's not about us. And they'll really have an opportunity to learn some soft skills, to be a part of our city government, to be able to shadow professionals and really gain a nice experience on, on just you know, what, what happens in the city. So it's a, it's a little bit of a civic responsibility as well. 
And I, I'm excited about it. It's the first time it's ever been done. It's for the kids. And you know, I can't say enough about it. And certainly as you know, one of the divisions within the city, I'm proud to be part of this uh, endeavor with, with the mayor. So thank you so much, Mayor Donchis, and thank you for everyone who's been involved. Thank you again, Bob Chopra. I, I really appreciate um, the, the collaboration that, that has happened here, and we will certainly continue that with the mayor's office. Board members' response to the superintendent's uh, comments? Ms. Van Twaba, I'll start around. Did you have anything? No. Mr. Kaufman? Thanks. Uh, Dr. Mosley, uh, could you please arrange a meeting, a non-public meeting for the board to discuss uh, safety and security? We did this last year uh, when I came on board. I had similar questions before any tragedies, and we met with Mr. Lassard that, that was available to us, so the board knows what it knows. Uh, clearly, to Mr. Whitehead's point, we don't want to reveal vulnerabilities in public, as, as you alluded to, but I think it would be uh, beneficial to the new board members to have the benefit of uh, speaking with Mr. Lassard at a future date in a non-public session. Ms. Hohensi, do you have anything? I haven't found it this no? time. Ms. Timmons? Oh, sorry, no comment. Okay. Ms. Raymond, do you have anything? Um, thank you. I um, just wanted to highlight the internship, um, and I, I know a lot of teenagers aren't watching our meetings, um, but for any parents who are, um, just to put the bug in the ear of, of any kids that you know or your kids, your friends, uh, your kids' friends, um, it's a really amazing opportunity, and I would really love to see some of our kids take advantage of that. Mr. Greeno. Thank you, Madam President. I, I just want the parents, I want to thank Mr. Whitehead for his comments, and uh, I want to thank all the other parents for their comments regarding security. Uh, I have a daughter who is in Nashua High South, so I, you know, that hits home with me. Um, as uh, in, in the Finance and Operations Committee meetings, we are having conversations already uh, with plant operations and... Um, so, so these, these are definitely to the forefront. Um, every school is unique. They were all built at different times. They all have the unique challenges to, to security. So there's a lot that, that we have to work through. And um, so as we go through the budget process, uh, hopefully we'll, we could make a plan and, and have these needs in line and, and, and try to fund them as, as quick as we can. Um, so I just wanted to... To, to make make that known that we are we are, you know we are aware of, of these uh, these issues. I just wanted to say I, I think the interim program is just a great great program and I know we have a lot of students that will flourish in a program like that. Uh, also, it's nice to see uh, mental health included uh, with with the safety issues we're looking at. That that probably is. Uh, one of the most important areas we could look at at this point when you look at all the events that have happened, so many of them are traced back to mental health. So I, I'm glad, and I want people to know that there are meetings, safety meetings planned, uh, where, where there will be a great deal of collaboration between all of the people who are responsible for safety in our city. So uh, that, will be, that will be happening. Okay, uh, student board member Haley. Hi. Hi. Well, to start, um, that internship program, I've heard about it. I've looked into it a little bit, and I know that my, I myself and a few of other people I know are very interested in it. And I know another issue has been security, and especially after the tragedies that have happened in the recent weeks and over the past few years, school security and school safety have always been issues on our, on our minds as students. With every lockdown drill we do, you know, it is saying that it's probably one of my biggest fears <coughs> just when we do those drills because, you know, the problem is that can happen mm -hmm. very easily and we are very aware of that. And that shooter um, down in Florida, he did everything that my school psychology um, teacher taught us about, um, pulling the fire drill. 
And I think that's something that not all students are prepared for, and I think that some changes need to be made in order to make all of us completely safe. Thank you so much. The, and, and the fire drill was real interesting to me when I read about that, so um, thank you. Okay, uh, Committee on the Budget. Mr. Kaufman? Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, we are on a weekly meeting schedule. So on Wednesday, February 14th, we uh, had presentations from transportation, the CTE program, plant operations, and we got through most of Dr. McKinney's presentation on curriculum. The following week, which was last week on the 21st, we completed the curriculum presentations, uh, athletics and technology uh, presentations. This coming week, uh, two days from now on Wednesday, uh, the mayor will be with us talking about the salary cap, uh, sorry, not the salary cap, I'm sorry, the spending cap. We'll have a discussion by Mr. Donovan talking about the, the software tool we have that allows us to peek into the budget and look back and look at trends and expenses is very interesting. And also uh, the third agenda item this coming week on Wednesday will be a presentation about substitute teachers and uh, I'll just ask Mr. Donovan, you ha have been able to update that since we saw it from last year? It's not completed yet, but. Hopefully by Wednesday. Right. Okay, well, I, we know what the, me I know what the message is, so we'll be able to share that. That's all I have, uh, Mrs. Oden. Okay, and the next meeting is this Wednesday? This Wednesday, 6.30 in this room. Committee on Finance and Operations. Mr. Garino. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, we have a number of items. We had a pretty busy uh, Committee on Finance and Operations. Our first item um, is a recommendation to approve the purchase of Pixelit cameras. These cameras will be placed outdoors at, at our football stadium. And um, I did, don't have my notes with me, but uh, they 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 are they are robust and 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 very sturdy, and they're going to be uh, the, our games are going to go on a uh, a specific uh, channel, and maybe Dr. Mosley could or Dan can help me. That that's going to be for um, uh, for for schools that that's specifically designed for for uh, schoolboy athlete, athletes. Yes, there's, there's uh, four cameras, two of them. One will be at Holman, one will be at Stellos. The other two will be in the high school gym. So there'll be two inside, two outside. Um, but this camera, one of the main reasons for this camera is they'll take, they'll, this camera just, it, it doesn't need to move. It, the, it's got a number of different lenses and it follows the movement. It's really quite interesting if you look at it. Um, if you look at it live, there's in your packet, there's a, um, a website you can look at. Um, but a lot of the information, the game will be, will be uh, on this web channel and then it'll be downloaded into a, a software called Huddle, which is what a lot of the coaches use for their training and things. So uh, yeah, that's, the, that's the, main, the main point of it. Plus it's available if Grandpa is out in Arizona somewhere and he wants to watch the game, he can watch it on the website. And, and uh, the financing, they, the money is already there for, for financing, is that correct? Yes, we'll be taking the money originally from the Athletics Expendable Trust Fund and then each of the teams is going to fundraise, I believe $350 per team. So, and that money is that that's twelve thousand that'll come back that'll be replaced into the athletic uh, trust fund. So the total cost is expected to be about eleven thousand eight hundred out of the trust fund. And if we pass it tonight, uh, then hopefully Ms. Gingris can can uh, if she gets gets it in before the end of the month, we'll have a discount on it. Yes, that's correct. Um, will this be on our school website or a different website? A different website. Okay. And will we have like a link or something? I just want to make sure that you yes. know, I can watch it as well. 
and I think. Yes, sir. Thank you. So I, I just noticed something in the proposal. There's also an opportunity to raise revenue through subscriptions to live broadcasts. So I think it's a great idea. Um, I remember what we did last year on finance where we had the, uh, we redid the, um, the whole fundraising policy. And if my mind serves me correctly, I don't know that we addressed anything around subscriptions or live broadcasts. So if the, if Ms. Gingras or the sponsors or whatever go down that road, I'm just suggesting to you, and because we reviewed it in finance and in policy, uh, there is a policy on you know fundraising related things. So you, I think you're going to have to tap into that. Just the, the um, new charted ground we didn't even think of six months ago. So which is of course Ms. Gingras always thinking ahead. Thank you. Okay, looking for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve um, the uh, purchase of the Pixelit cameras. Second. Second. Okay. Third. <laughs> okay. okay. On, on the motion, uh, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mrs. Oden? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Timmons is, has left. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. The motion passes. Um, seven to zero. Next, next on the agenda is a uh, recommendation to approve the purchase of 300 Chromebooks for the SPED <coughs> department from IT Insiders at a cost of $67,185 to come from the IDEA grant. I'd like to make a motion to approve um, the purchase. The purchase. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. You can take a vote. On the motion, um, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Oden? Yes. Uh, Ms. Uh, Mr. Kaufman? Uh, Ms. Raymond? Yes. Uh, Ms. Van Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. And Mr. Garino votes yes. The motion carries one, two, three, four, five, six to zero. Next. Next on the uh, agenda is a uh, recommendation to approve the issue of request for bids for eight firms interested in the energy performance contracting bid for the high schools. I'd like to make a motion to, uh, to approve this. Looking for a second. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? Okay. Okay, on the motion, uh, Mr. Mosher. Yes. Mrs. Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. The motion carries six to zero. Um, recommendation to approve to have Mr. Smith issue two RFPs, one for solar farm and the other op for options associated for leased and owned solar panels. Um, I'd like to make a motion to, uh, to approve this uh, recommendation. recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Second by Mr. Mosher. Any discussion? Okay. On, on the motion, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mrs. Oden? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. The motion passes six to zero. And our last item is a recommendation to accept and place on file the special revenue audit for school activity funds for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2017. I'd like to make a motion to accept this, uh, to accept this and place on file. Second. Okay, 
Okay, any discussion? Okay. Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mrs. Oden? Yes. Uh, Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Mr. Kaufman, do you want to vote on that last item? A recommendation to accept and place on file the special revenue audit for school activity funds? Yes, thank you. Motion carries seven to zero. I believe that's all we have on the Committee on Finance and Operations. Okay. Committee on um, Policy. Uh, so the policy committee um, met on February 20th um, of this past month. Uh, we did not, uh, we removed our minutes um, from the consent agenda um, because they aren't ready yet. Um, so that would move all of our items to the next um, meeting scheduled for March the 12th, uh, the next regular board meeting, which is March the 12th. Um, we did discuss quite a, quite a few things, um, but I will save that discussion for when we come back. Um, our next meeting is uh, Tuesday, March 20th at 6 p.m. Um, the other item of note on the policy committee is that Mr. Moser uh, tended his resignation um, as the chair of the policy committee uh, due to his health issues preventing him from appearing in public. Thank you. Okay. Next, curriculum, uh, a committee on curriculum and evaluation. Um, I'm oh, sorry. I just, I just wanted to make one comment. There was a URL missing in policy JLCK that perhaps you would like, the chair would like, um, the acting chair would like to make a note of. So when it comes back, um, that URL could be put in. Thank you, Mrs. Hohensey. I will write that down. Okay. Committee on Curriculum and Evaluation, Ms. Van Twyver. Thank you, Madam President. We had our first me meeting of the year on February 19th, and um, we had three things that we were considering. Uh, the first uh, one was that Dr. McKinney reviewed uh, four different topics that he, we asked him to uh, come back with information on, and that was the MSP grant, the Lucy Calkins, um, the network, requirements for um, study sync. So he covered all those uh, very well. Uh, but the biggest thing that we had was the 21st century talk, which was wonderful. Uh, the uh, coordinator, um, program coordinator was Gail, Cas is Gail C Casey. Did I get it that correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, she um, ta gave us a very good description of the 21st century program. It is a federal program. It's called Title IV-B. Um, it's in 25 sites in uh, our state. She, she was a remarkable woman. She's uh, evidently the year funded uh, $415,000 a year uh, for homework club after school program. And um, she has herself and five people working with her, uh, one at each of the Title IV. By Title I schools. Um, this program has evidently been in our district for 17 years. Um, let's see, some of the important things that she told us, I'm trying to get them all in here. Um, I guess the, there was be no tutoring next year. There was the tutoring that happened last year came partly from Title I funds, funding, I think. Um, so, uh, let's see, she, um, I was very impressed with her talk and, and her detail. Uh, I think it would be good for everyone to watch that program so that they understand um, about, uh, they have uh, an ELL homework club, which is different than her homework club. And so it's about three hours after school. There are about 70 students uh, that are affected each school. They, um, funding also comes from a, uh, uh, about $50 a month for uh, students that participate, although they have a scholarship fund for those who can't afford the $50. The other thing that, um, that she brought out was that she really talks and works with the parents to see what they can afford and um, they also have a scholarship fund 
uh, where they have give them one year's membership to the Boys and Girls Club. So very worthwhile program. Uh, they also work with the USDA snack uh, program. And uh, I was very impressed. She, she's cut her budget, her operating budget, 47% mm. last year. And the way she did that was that she participated as one of the site coordinators. Uh, three of them were not uh, participating for a period, and that money she took to use for other things. So um, she said she has 950 hours of program. If she was, and they get evaluated by the state every year, and the report is sent to the district, so I'm sure we'll hear some uh, kind of report. Uh, she's, I was very impressed with her. Uh, Dr. McKinney is working on a plan for the summer program, um, and we'll be looking for grants. And let's see, that's about it. Oh, the other thing was the professional development for, uh, that Mr. M Dr. McKinney referred to earlier on. That was the last, the uh, third topic. So the next meeting of the curriculum committee is going to be on March 19th, and I believe we will have a presentation on Fountas and Pinnell uh, reading program uh, for that. So if you're interested, tune in or uh, attend the meeting. I'd love to have you. Thank you. Just for clarification, what time do your meetings start? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Thank you. Okay. Committee on Human Resources um, and... Miss Miss oh. Timmons, I'm sorry, she had a family emergency, so she had to leave. Miss Timmons had to leave. Well, so. I did chair the meeting. Sorry, I almost forgot. Um, with the f there was only two items on our agenda this evening. Um, I assume that we can take care of them if we suspend the rules. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going to require a motion to suspend the rules so that we can uh, enter this report for a meeting that was held prior to this one. Okay, do we have a second? A second. Okay, uh, roll call. On the motion to suspend the rules, uh, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mrs. Oden? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Uh, the motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, I move to accept the personnel recommendations that were presented at the meeting on February 26th, earlier this uh, evening. A second. Is there any discussion? All I'll say is we had, I think, uh, 12 retirements, I believe, uh, on our agenda. So I, I think from the last meeting to this one, I think we have a total of 30, 31 retirements <coughs> in the district. So that's a little bit more than usual. Not a lot, but a little bit more. So. Okay. Uh, vote. On, on the motion uh, to recommend to recommendation to approve personnel recommendations, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Mrs. Oden? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. The uh, motion carries seven to zero. Okay. The next item of business was a proposed policy, separation from employment policy. Um, it was in our packets this week, and there were only three uh, corrections or additions to that um, policy. The first one was on paragraph three, which um, modified the last sentence in the paragraph to be, exit survey results will be compiled and presented to the board on an annual basis in September. Um, then in paragraph one, two, three, four, five, um, the recommendation was to strike the word credit cards because there's only two credit cards in the district. And one is uh, Mr. Donovan's uh, holds and the superintendent holds the other. Who's the other one? I, I don't have a credit card. No, you don't. It's myself and the assistant business director, Paul Calabria. Okay. Those are the two. Those are the two. So um, it was recommended that we 
strike that from that paragraph that uh, they don't have credit cards. So um, I move the uh, adoption of the uh, separation from employee policy, employment policy as amended and to send it forth to the full board for approval. I'll second. Excuse me, we have a conversation going on over there. Okay, I will second that. Okay. Can I speak to that? Uh, yes. So I'm a little confused. I, I thought the maybe, uh, I thought we were bringing forward the personnel recommendations and that's what we suspended the rules for. This particular uh, policy that, that we did, well, that the committee did vote and move forward is incomplete, it requires editing, and is in an un it's, in, it's not in a finished state. So I, I'm, you know, and this is something we talked about in yes, committee. I so, apologize, yeah, so, I apologize. That's when you, what happens when you give me too much. We to had do. Wait, yeah. one after another, Ms. Van Twyver, tonight. Yeah. So. Do you understand my concern? Yes, I do. Maybe you yes. can address yes. it then, please. Uh, what he, Mr. Kaufman is asking about is the fact that we need to see a final um, copy of this uh, policy with the new number at the top and um, to make sure that the edits were made correctly. So I guess I withdraw my, I'm a little confused on what I'm doing here, so. Are you going, going to send it back to committee? To yes. To have those changes made? made and sent back to committee. Thank you, Madam President. Okay. I'll second that. We'll vote to send it back to committee. Okay, on the vote to um, send the policy as amended back to uh, committee, uh, Mr. Mosher. I say yes. Ms. Mrs. Oden. Yes. That was not the intention. The intention was for the board to uh, take it and uh, and move it on to a policy committee. Mr. Mosher, that was eventually that. Was that was suggested, but it needs to come back to policy, uh, back to the HR committee, so that they can see a final um, copy of the, of the policy. Yeah, that would be nice to see a uh, a, poly, uh, a cor uh, corrected copy in black and white rather than that red. Point of order. Thank you. I, I don't mean to interrupt, but um, at the HR committee, there was a three to one zero vote to recommend it. But I believe the understanding was wait for a final copy at the board level before it moved forward. And after that point, it was going to go to policy. That's my recollection of what just happened tonight. And you are correct. Okay. Whatever. So it needs to be sent back to... All right. Strike everything. Every HR. every suggestion. Well, that's not what she was saying. She no. was saying that it, yeah, the final copy would go to the full board, full board for approval in two weeks. In two weeks, not tonight, but in two weeks, and then it would come back. So I guess we don't need a, a motion. Okay. Oh, we have to remind also. Um, Dr. Mosley had had. Uh, yes. Um, there was a. Policy, policy that, that he was going to have comments on in January was? It was BEDB that Mr. Kaufman presented on December 11th that he was going to review and make comments and bring back to HR. And just a reminder that was brought up in committee. Yeah. So that concludes the report. Okay. I apologize for... No. No. Thank you for filling in. That was... That Last was, uh, minute, so... Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, Li liaison reports. Anybody been liaising? Okay, we'll move on to unfinished business. <coughs> Governance request for a presentation by, oh, let me see the name. Uh, School District Governance Association of New Hampshire that was in everybody's packet where we were invited to go to a workshop and Miss uh, Miss Hohensi asked if these people could be invited 
to uh, board. Do we have any discussion? May I Ms. speak Talancy? to it? I, I would like. I would like to move that we invite them to to give a similar presentation, um, as we heard from the New Hampshire School Board Association, to provide some Second. balance. Second. Second. Any discussion? I would like to speak to my motion. Okay. I think they're a different type of organization. They're new. They've got board members from 22 different districts. They present a totally different um, approach. And um, I think that a lot of policies can be received from the department through uh, the technical advisories that they present. We can get the bargaining agreements on the PERLRB website. So it, I don't know that we're as dependent on that one organization as opposed to the other. And I just think the board would benefit from seeing both sides. Ms. Ms. Raymond? Uh, I'm opposed um, to inviting um, this particular association to speak to us. Um, I frankly don't think we should give um, them a platform. Um, I googled Ms. Green. Um, she was on the Timberlane School District um, uh, school board, and um, she resigned after five months after being censured by her. Is this her. out of order? Um, only because you're speaking about people who aren't here, this was harming the, the reputation of someone. I'm sorry. Just I think asking. No, I, I, I think she order. has a right because this is the lady who wrote to us about this association, and I think okay. we, we should hear her out. Thank you. Listen, I'm, I'm speaking to um, information that was in the news um, and that is publicly available to anyone who has Google. Um, the woman who created this association was censured by her own school board for lying to the public. If you Google her name and the word censure, you can see the multiple page document that her own school board wrote um, about the multiple times that she um, spread um, misinformation to her um, constituents. I don't, um, and then she had, then she resigned. Um, there's articles in the local newspaper up there. Um, this happened uh, about a year before she created her own um, association. So I don't think that um, it is appropriate um, for us to um, invite her here and give her a platform um, given that background. I just don't think it sends an appropriate message to our students. Uh, Mr. Garino? I agree with, thank you. Um, Thank you, um, Madam President. I agree with uh, Ms. Raymond. <clears throat> Ms. Hohens, he, uh, I'm sorry. Um, one of our board members states that we need to see the both sides of something. I don't know what both sides of what. Um, we have a, we have a, uh, an agency that, that was here earlier that started in 1946. They are mainstream. They, they've been in business a long, long time. They have a over 150 districts, I think they said. Um, so I don't think we need anybody new. I'm very, very wary of this new organization. I worry about their ideology. Um, I, I, I worry very much about their ideology. It's not mainstream. And, and so I would be against this. Uh, Ms. Hohensi and then Mr. Kaufman. Thank you. I think the two organizations are very different. One is top-down, one is a bottom-up membership-driven organization. One is an activist organization with a highly paid lobbyist. And as I mentioned, and I will find verification for the next meeting, they, are out of, they were out of compliance last year with their, with their lobbying. And if, if that is true, that's a felony. So Mrs. Uh, Green was on the board for many years. It wasn't just five months. There was contention. She had right to know um, issues that she brought to court and that she won. So it's a different approach. Um, right now, this organization spends 25% of the membership dues on a lobbyist. Out of, they have about 600 and 561,000 they get in membership dues and 141 is spent thousand is spent on lobby a lobbyist. I'm sorry. So can you stick, stick uh, what to I'm this saying one? is there are two different types uh -huh. of organization. One is top down. The other works collaboratively from the bottom up. Um, 
it, it's just what you want to present. And I just thought that we ought to look at both issues. I don't, you know, there are, we didn't have that group for two years because the previous board, the majority, didn't favor some of their their lobbying ideas. The fact that they don't r respect parents. Um, so I just thought it would be good to have both sides presented. If, you, if this board wants to just present one type side and vote, so be it. I'm a minority, maybe. But I just asked because I thought it would be a good idea. Mr. Kaufman? You can't believe everything you read on the internet. And we need to know that that's true these days. And I think uh, we should hear what Ms. Green has to say if she'll accept an invitation from us. Um, it is a different kind of organization, as Ms. Hohensey suggests. It's member-driven. There are no subscriptions for uh, a school board. It's strictly school board members who, or other relate, people who've been involved in school boards, budget committees, and things like that. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Mosley? Madam Chair, I'm just curious. Has any school board member, current or former, been involved in this organization? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, for the record, I raised my hand. And for the record, I raised my hand. And some of the former board members were also members. Um, I also did some research on this. Um, I guess the, the first article I came up was on this. Uh, the, the lady who started this association had been censured uh, in on her school board. Uh, and then I was digging a little deeper. I found from the Raymond Area News, uh, December 20th, 2016, an article about this lady who had started the District Governance Association of New Hampshire. And uh, I found a couple paragraphs fairly interesting. While board members must have school board or school budget committee experience, provision is made for non-voting members who share the group's philosophy. The reason we want to restrict voting membership to people who have school responsibility is that our positions are founded on experience, she said. <coughs> the group is also looking to create model policies to empower school boards to have more authority and hope to lobby legislators to change laws that currently consolidate power at the SAU level, giving the superintendent more than the group thinks he or she should have. Uh, philosophically, I am completely against that. I think school boards ought to hire professionals to uh, run the districts. Uh, and. I, Quite frankly, I was really surprised. The next paragraph, it says, it's talking about the chairs of the different committees, and it mentions Mr. Howard Kaufman, a member of the National Board of Education, chairs the Policy Standing Committee, which I don't believe he does anymore. Uh, I think there's a new member, but I, I nothing personal, but philosophically, I, I just disagree with uh, this governance association and will not support this. Anybody else? Yes, me. Okay, Mr. Mosier. Yes, I, uh, you know, we're constantly talking about uh, lobbyists. And uh, a lobbyist is nothing more than a representative, a paid representative, to go out and, uh, and speak on uh, issues and activities of the group. And uh, there's nothing wrong with being a lobbyist. Some of the best lobbyists are former members of the uh, legislature, and they know their way about. They know uh, which uh, part of the stairs go up and which part goes down. But uh, philosophically, this uh, uh, governance group, I want to have nothing to do with them whatsoever, because I got a feeling that they are subversive and trying to uh, take power away from the people who are supposed to have the power. And I would not support it, not in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Ms. Van I, I would like to make the point that the people who voted against not belonging to the 
uh, New Hampshire's SBA was the reason that they lobby. And uh, I find it kind of interesting that uh, Ms. Hohensi and Mr. Kaufman would, would propose another organization that lobbies, so I won't be voting for it. Mr. Kaufman? The issue is lobbying with public funds, and that's the issue with the school, uh, New Hampshire School Board Association. When we make a, uh, when we pay our dues to uh, that particular organization, it has to be from segregated funds that cannot include any public funds. In the case of the uh, other school association, the dues is twenty dollars a year for people. So. Um, and that's private money. So whatever lobbying occurs is sincerely not financed to the tune of uh, whatever that number was, uh, $141,000 a year, and no public funds are used. The issue about the lobbying is because pu the potential, the opportunity to use public funds, which is against the law. I forget exactly if it's 515 or 155, but there is a a law against uh, using public funds for lobbying. Thank you. Ms. Ohansi? Thank you. It's RSA 15.5 and it's using state money to lobby the state legislature. And um, Merrimack delved into it about a year or so ago. And you can't just have an accounting separation. There has to be a physical s separation of the funds. So any funds that we got from the state cannot be used to purchase um, a membership in any one of these associations that hires a lobbyist, it would be illegal under state law. Merrimack found out they were not in compliance and had to change what they were doing. Um, so uh, there's a difference between taxpayer funding of lobbyists and private funding or volunteer lobbyists is what it is. Ms. Van Fiver? Yeah, I believe the mayor has a, a lobbyist for the uh, train train uh, business, you know, trying to get the Rail. training command. Yeah, I think he has, he does have a lobbyist for that. I, someone better tell him about the law. Ms. Raymond. Thank you. I just want to remind us that the issue under uh, discussion right now is not which one of these school board associations we're choosing. The issue is whether or not we are inviting uh, the school district governance of association, uh, association of New Hampshire to come and speak before our board to give a presentation, yes? Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Mr. Kaufman, can Call you- Call the question, please. Uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, on the vote uh, to request a presentation by SDGANH, uh, School District Governance Association of New, Ham New Hampshire, Mr. Mosher? No. Mrs. Oden? No. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Raymond? No. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? No. Mr. Garino votes no. The motion uh, does not carry. Um, five no's, two yeses. Okay. Uh, the board request log is next. An update? Do we have that? So I can speak briefly to that if you need me to. Okay, um, thank you. Certainly. I have it. Um, any type of, t uh, when I get a request made to me or to directly to Tara, um, we certainly just log this on and we keep it updated. Um, certainly it's, um, it has definitely grown since we, I'm sorry, since we last met um, the request, we certainly have more requests that are, that are being um, made by the board and we're certainly logging them in and we will certainly um, address them as, as, as quickly as we can in a priority. Some of the requests take more time than, than others. Some of the requests may go back to policy. That's not for me to decide, but certainly you know, one option. And so um, uh, the, the administration or myself, Tara, Dana, Dan, um, 
Dr. McKinney and, and Ms. Fitzpatrick are certainly um, willing and able to respond to these requests as they start to come through. Okay. Okay, we will move on. I'm sorry. There's a hand over oh, there. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I just, um, I'm noticing on this one there's only this month's request. Is that the plan to only include the one month and not anything prior? My understanding of when the request was made is that so from now until the next board meeting, you'll get an updated list. Okay. From now until the next board meeting, you'll mm -hmm. get another one. So at the time, this one was the most recent. Gotcha. Okay. Mr. Kaufman? Yeah, I'm going to... I'm just a little bit confused. Is this going to be a cumulative list as yes as going forward? Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, new business policy committee uh, to uh, President Odin. It is with regret that I must tender my resignation from chairmanship of the policy committee effective immediately. My present physical condition precludes my personal regular attendance at our meetings, which is accomplished electronically. As you know, I'm recovering from surger surgery associated with my broken hip and edema. My rehabilitation has been lengthy as well as at times painful. It has been most difficult using a walking device, entering and ex exiting a vehicle, and the weather has not been kind at all. Uh, sure. William Mosier. And... Uh, Mr. Mosier, I'm glad you can still participate in our meetings using that, but I look forward to you coming back when uh, there is no ice on the ground and will cause problems for you. And uh, keep keep doing that physical therapy. Thank you for your uh, confidence. I am uh, trying to uh, uh, move along and uh, get the, the strength back into my legs. There's no fun being died to a bed for uh, six months. Uh, I can believe that. Thank you. Um, the next one, custodial private. Oh, I'm sorry. I just want to thank you, Mr. Mosher, um, for, for your expertise, your knowledge, your experience uh, at the Finance uh, and Operations Committee. And um, so, so you're still going to be with us, and I'm still going to rely on you as I, as I always do for your, for, for your help. So I want to thank you very much for what you've done so far. You've been, you've been present almost at every meeting I've been to physically, you've been present here. So I think we, uh, you, you deserve a, 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 a thanks for that. Well, it's been about 10 years that uh, I haven't missed a, a meeting. And with my background in uh, me mechanical engineering and electrical, uh, I know my services have been uh, appreciated by the members of the Joint Special and, and others. And uh, beyond finance and operations, uh, being able to understand what's going on about me, as well as my uh, uh, being a policy wonk, I have enjoyed myself immensely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Oden? Yes. So why don't you just announce Mr. Mosier's replacement? It's your prerogative to do that. Uh, I, I'm not going to do it tonight. I'm going to wait. I think we've had enough on the agenda. And I, I, I looked at the policy meeting. We have another board meeting before the policy meeting, the, the policy committee meeting. Would you entertain a motion for that position? Custodial. No, we're not going to deal with it tonight. Um, but thank you. Custodial privatization discussion motion per council recommendation. Just real quick, um, Tom Kloss made a recommendation. Um, there was a vote taken by, it's my understanding to the best of my knowledge, there was a vote taken by the, by the board or the former board to move forward with privatization. So Tom um, um, made the recommendation for the board to um, to make a decision or to get some direction on whether it, there is still an appetite for privatization or not. So he said, he made the recommendation to um, bring forward that discussion and have some type of determination or vote by the board whether there's still an appetite for pro privatization or not. Okay. 
I'm looking. Is there a motion so we can have discussion? Mr. Garino? Um, it's no um, secret that I'm against privatization uh, of, of the custodians, so I make a motion that the, uh, that, that the district not uh, proceed with privatization of custodial services. Second. Okay, discussion? Mrs. Oden. Mr. Kaufman. I think no matter how it, the board end up, ends up deciding and voting, I think they deserve to learn more about the situation and circumstance that the previous board uh, unanimously at the time, if I recall correctly, well, no, no, there was one dissenting vote, Ms. Kleiner voted against it. But the motion, the movement, or the determination to go forward and privatize was a, all but one vote was eight to one at the time. And I think it behooves the board, this current board, to find out from the previous board through the, I know Mr. Donovan lived through that whole thing, and uh, of course, Attorney Clausen, that I think it would behoove the board to have a meeting to discuss it, to get briefed, and then make the decision. I think right now, any decision made would be without the benefit of what the previous board knew and why it made the decision that it made. Ms. Raymond. Um, I am curious if there is additional information that was not available in public um, meetings that um, those of us who weren't on the board at the time have already had access to. I, I can't offhand say there was any. Uh, what I can say is that was discussed at um, the League of Women Voters and, and I believe a couple of the other forums and I think uh, Mr. Garino, Mr. Garino was uh, one of the people who ran two years ago because of that. He certainly was familiar. I believe you're familiar from, from listening to you. Uh, I, I believe Ms. Um, Timmons, who is on the negotiating team, is familiar with that. I think I think Ms. Van Twyver, Mr. Kaufman, and Ms. Hohensi are, and I stated my opinion. I, I listened, I voted for it, and I listened to people. I, I listened to a lot of parents. I talked to professionals. I listened to, um, I, I investigated other schools that had privatized and looked at that, and uh, I, I, don't see, I don't see it's in our best interest. Whatever money we save in the beginning, uh, I think we'll, we'll pay for in the past, much like, like we did with our transportation. So I won't support it. So I, I just, I, I think it's probably a good idea to vote on it. Ms. Ohensi. Thank you. I think the people that were for privatization have pretty much left the board. And we, there was a, it was an eight one split before I got on the board, it evolved to a 5-4 in favor of privatization. Um, since those members have left, there's no longer a majority that would favor it. So I think the vote would probably be apropos. Um, it was one of the reasons why we couldn't finish the, the, the ASME negotiations because we, we had that tug of war on the board that um, there wasn't a consensus to to move forward productively. So I think that would lift a burden and, and help. It was something that we couldn't do, you know, with the last board. So I think it would be a constructive to vote. I have a suggestion. Mr. M Mr. Mosier? Yes, it is uh, uh, after 9 o'clock now, uh, almost 20 after. I think that we're all tired now, and I think it would be wise to table the motion until the next board meeting and then take it up earlier in the meeting. Well, we haven't passed that policy yet, and uh, I think, I think there, there would be a chance for us to finish that up very quickly. I think most of the discussion is over, and I think uh, if somebody want, would want to call the motion, I think we could vote on it. Call the motion. Undebatable. On, 
On the motion uh, to recommend the district no longer proceed with privatization of custodial services, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Um, Could you read the motion again, yes, please? Yes, the motion. Um, recommend the district no longer proceed with privatization of custodial services. So a yes vote would um, would would uh, give a, give council uh, the uh, the notice that we are no longer going to privatize custodial services. Mrs. Oden? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Mr. Mosher? He, he Mosher went. He, he did. Yes. Um, Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? No. Mr. Garino votes yes. The motion carries um, six to one. See, the next thing on the agenda is uh, security, the school drill, drill list and security policies, ECA, ECAR. Um, I had asked for that school drill list um, because I... Being a teacher, I know that you're supposed to have a, a fire drill once a month. You're supposed to have one for each month. I guess what what jumped out at me is nobody's done evacuations, and I was just wondering if they'd done away with evacuations in the schools. The, the issue was still the school year, so there's still time to do it. Um, we have not done away with evacuation, and um, certainly we drill what we can drill, but certainly um, I'm trying to find the document. That's why I'm kind of going off the hand, but I do have the document. Um, I, thought you were, I thought we were going to go somewhere else with it, so I apologize for that. I do okay. have. Okay. Uh, sure. Let me just show you this real quick. So, so we do do evacuations, you know, certainly it's not, we try to do evacuations when it's the most ideal situation. So for instance, if it's a nice day or it's not icy out, um, uh, we tend to, to perform that. So um, there's still opportunities to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, here. I also noticed several schools had only done three fire drills. Mm -hmm. I look at... Must have done one in September when school was was first in session, so that especially the kindergarten students know where they're going. September, October, November. Mm -hmm. I know December was cold and January is cold, but February we had a couple of days that were seventy. So I would think most schools would have at least four, and I saw a lot of threes on that list. Mm -hmm. So I, I I think we we should remind people that. Yep. That is something that needs to be done. I, yep. Maybe they get lax with it. and uh, It's always, I know when I was in the classroom, it was always uh, when you had a nice day in yeah. cold weather, you tried to take advantage of that. Yeah. So Absolutely. I, I would just hope that we would uh, make sure that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing. Thank you. And the security policies. I wanted to, and Chris, you can kind of come up here as well. Um, we have, and I wanted to, as we talked a little bit uh, earlier today, or this evening, excuse me, talk in broad sense of our security policies and a little bit of our procedures. Um, I've asked Chris and Chris, Chris Lassard, um, our security personnel here for the district has done a magnificent job of just organizing, working as liaison uh, with the fire and rescue. Um, even when there is, you know, Chris is probably, we've had too many 1 a.m., 2 a.m. phone calls. Um, so if there's a person that picks up the phone every single time when I make the call, it's definitely Chris. So thank you for everything you've, you've, you've done so far. Um, 
what we wanted to do is talk broadly about the security process and protocols and procedure. I say broadly because we don't want to say too, too much. Mm -hmm. And then during Mr. Howard, Mr. Kaufman, excuse me, made the request to a non-public to talk more about security protocol in general. And I think it's totally appropriate. We just can't do this here in non-public. So Chris came with a brief kind of overview, presentation, and a brief discussion of those policies and procedures. Dr. Mosley, the brief that I have is probably something that should be under non-public. Oh, okay. Okay. It, Can I just thank you? I I don't read the social things online, but I know there's something called the Nashua Civic Sounding Board, and you had responded to somebody on that. Uh, I think of Patricia, Patricia Sanchez, and she gave you high praise. And I know Mr. Whitehead up. Uh, who spoke to us earlier also had spoken to you, and uh, he he was very pleased with with his interaction with you and the information you gave him in the, the discussion. So I want to thank you for representing the district well. I think there's a lot of concern out there, as as you know you would expect. But I want I want to thank you because it, it's a very sensitive issue and. It, you're right, you can't say too much because of the fact that it is a safety issue. So I want to thank you an awful lot, Mr. Lassard, for what you're doing for the district. So we will have to go into non-public. Uh, May I just ask a question? On um, item number seven of ECA-R, as um, Mr. Hollowell alluded to earlier, number seven on page two, says employee ID will be accepted for access at every school, although employees other than plants up um, must sign in visitor logs to which they are not routinely assigned. So if that's our policy, um, why are our board um, ID badges been deactivated? It, it violates um, that policy. Madam Chair? Yes. Board members are employees. We are employees of the district. Yeah, you're Four thousand a year. May I respond? City? Are we employees of the city? Is that you're elected officials, mm -hmm. so you're not an employee. So employee would be someone who is getting paid by the like myself, teachers, um, Chris Lassard. But you are elected officials, just yes. like an alderman or just like the mayor. So um, the employee is someone who is not elected, but actually is hired by the district and um, goes through that process. So it, an employee would be someone that is supervised by myself or supervised by, my, um, by Mr. McKinney or, or principal. So you are elected official. Well, the money comes out of the operating budget and we're listed on there. And this always used to be the protocol. So I'm just wondering, what changed last 10, 15 years we did it, all of a sudden we didn't. Um, I guess Ms. Van Twyver brought it up and I'm just still very puzzled and perplexed as to why it happened. I would explain, I, Madam Chair? Yes, sure. M moving forward, um, we can go back and forth. I think there's just a fundamental disagreement in terms of what an employee is and what an elected board member is and certainly that can be uh, something that can be discussed by Attorney Clausen, or we can get some indication with that um, uh, from maybe Steve Bolton, the city attorney, or something like that. Because you know, um, you know, we can certainly have a discussion on that. Uh, moving forward, um, given our you know the current environment, what's going on here in the the, the nation, and mm -hmm. and what is important, everyone, and I say everyone, including myself, needs to sign in. And, and follow protocol. No one is, is above that. Um, it's the safety of our kids, and not to say that myself or anyone sitting here is a, is a threat to the kids, but you know, people don't know who the superintendent is. Kids don't know that. Not all of them do. And certainly we owe them that safety to make sure that, that um, people are signed in with a uh, badge and a uh, badge that you get from the main office if you don't have one, and, and following that protocol. I know this is a very difficult topic for people to, to kind of get a sense of, but you know, I have to say it's kind of, you can't hold the door, like no holding the door policy. I know that sounds something that, that that's, you're saying, oh, you, I was right here, I'm waiting, I'm gonna come in, you know, don't hold the door for me. I need to buzz in. 
Uh, and so I would encourage any parent, any administrator walking in, Dr. McKinney, you see him, have, close the door on him. Um, don't let him sign in. Uh, he, let, excuse me, let him sign in. He's no special than anyone else, and I would say that. We're in a very different environment. Um, it's not about personal pieces in terms of how people feel. It, it's really about one thing, our kids, and we want to keep that focus on our kids and not on our positions or anything like that. Ms. Bintweiler. Mr. Lassard, you need to check on these schools because after school programs, little young kids come and let you in the door and um, parents allow people to follow them in. Mm -hmm. You have to do something about that. If I'm considered a security risk, your doors are not safe, okay? It we, you and I work together on this policy very hard. And um, I now consider myself a security risk. I don't let anybody in the door. And I, the question wasn't the fact that you turned them off. The question was that you didn't let us know before the time. And no one is objecting to going in and signing in the office. I've always done that. But the fact of the matter is that if you did this without your supervision, your supervisor saying, telling you to do it, I think that was uh, pretty not nice and pretty disrespectful of this board. And I'm not going to say another word about this. I've already talked with uh, the superintendent about this, and he understands how I feel. And I don't care uh, about what people think that, uh, that this board shouldn't be allowed to go in. We should. We've been doing it for three years and never had a problem. Never had a problem. But all of a sudden, we get shut out, and uh, you've got to tighten up your security uh, on the, on the after-school program and any other time that somebody is allowed to go in there uh, when a kid opens the door or when a parent lets people come in or when Plan Ops comes and you can walk in right behind them, and I did that. Okay. Mr. Kaufman. You know, given the urgency and the severity and actually having this policy in front of us tonight, Madam Chairman, I request to suspend the rules to update the policy in an emergency situation, and I'll share with you the language I would ask the board to consider. Uh, move to require all employees with key card access to swipe their card upon entry and exit of each building they visit. I should say daily. Swipe their card daily or Ms. Freeman. whenever they go in and out of a building is the so intent. So just for clarification, my understanding is that um, badges, with the exception of administrative personnel, badges for employees um, and probably plant ops only work at um, a teacher's assigned school, mm -hmm. correct? So a teacher from, for example, Ledge Street cannot use that badge to log in at Birch Hill even if they have a meeting there and then they're coming out. They have to buzz, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. okay. I didn't know that. So, because I know there are teachers that go to multiple schools, so I thought that they would have access to both buildings. They do when they sign in. Oh, but not via key card access. Correct. They don't have access to that building. Okay. okay. So Mr. Lassar. Just to clarify, if a staff member is assigned to work at two schools, three schools, wherever the case may be, they have access to whatever school they're assigned to work at via the ID. Oh, so my understanding was correct then. We do have staff. Let me just clarify a little bit. We Ish. do have. <laughs> you can't use, but that, that's why I work. You Ish. can't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're right. You gave it to us, Dr. Mosley. We're going right. to use it. Fair enough, Mr. Kaufman. We have faculty, like some of our counselors and our, and our school psychologists, who work in multiple buildings. And so we do have, you know, the, the one, um, one of our, I can't Psych school psychologist that is um, uh, placed at Mount Pleasant and at Bicentennial would have access to uh, Mount Pleasant and Bicentennial's uh, schools. So yes, that is correct. Um, depending on most of our teaching force is assigned to one building, uh, which gives them access to that one building. Some of our, um, our perform, what I'm thinking, our unifying arts, like our teacher that teaches in multiple buildings would have access to uh, multiple buildings because of her teaching load or, or his teaching load. 
Ms. Raymond. Thank you. So to Mr. Kaufman's point, should there be an emergency and we need an accounting of who was in the building at the time of the emergency to make sure everyone is safe, is there um, a procedure um, in place right now where that um, school psychologist has a like a sign in or something where you know emergency personnel or the principal would be able to say this is in the accounting of all the people who are in the building right now and yes they're all accounted for they don't i could kind of give a generalization and then please jump in or you know um, what every employee is required to do is chronos in so when they chronos in they sign in to the building they're in um, so uh, that's the the process we do in terms of monitoring people coming in or who are working. Uh, so uh, to record each person going into the building using the swipe card uh, would be something we have to look into. I'd be more than happy to do that, but I don't have that information in front of me right now. It, as long as someone swipes in, there, there's a record of it Okay. You know that, that we can access. Um, if you're a visitor, let's say I'm a teacher at North, but I don't teach at South, but I have a meeting at South. You know, even though you show your ID, you're required to sign in. So there's a record of that in the visitor book. I know a lot of schools, I can't speak to everyone, but I know a lot of schools, if a teacher has to leave for a few minutes, uh, whether it's, you know, on their break or whatever, I know a lot of schools are required to sign in and out so they can account for them if the fire alarm goes off, for instance. Or a class needs to be covered or something exactly. like that. I, I just want to say that's what was explained to me, the need to sign in and sign out. We want to be able to account for you in case there's an emergency. So they, they have made that. Mr. Kaufman. I, thank you, Ms. Raymond, for understanding my concern. So if I understand what Dr. Mosley just said, people swipe in or chronos in, but they don't swipe out or chronos out. Correct. So in case of an emergency, we wouldn't necessarily know through the electronic system if someone left the building or if you had access to the written record or not, I don't know. So my proposal here right now is intended to give us a record of when people leave, we know they're out of the building in case there is a fire, an emergency. If you, you were to check that log, you would know who left because they swiped out. Even if it's separate from a time card, but it's, it's we know you're in and we know you're out. Ms. Raymond. Thank you. I would then suggest, um, because I, I think this is an area of need, that um, Dr. Mosley um, go back to his staff and find out what makes sense, as opposed to us adding language when we don't really understand what's working and not working right now, um, and then come back to us either here or perhaps at policy to say, I've, you know, I've, I've gathered the information and here is what um, will work going forward to make sure that like no one's left behind. I'm just, um, I'm just really um, concerned about the idea that um, we might think that, for example, um, a school psychologist has gone to the other building and they didn't, or they did and we don't know. And you know, I don't want to be missing people. Heaven forbid something should happen. So, okay, Ms. Hohensi. Thank you. I, I agree with Mrs. Ray Raymond. I think that it's a concern if we're going to use it to, to log at least the staff that we ought to try to use that tool as effectively as we can. My question is the ID badges were given. We don't use Kronos. We use the doors. What information does that register? Does there, do you track who opened the door and the time? Or is it just opening the door with no knowledge who did it? Anytime someone uses their ID, it, it lets you know what door it was used on, what date and time it was used on, um, whether they had access to the building or not. Like if it was a rejected access, mm -hmm. let's say I'm a staff member, again, who has a meeting at another school, but I don't work there, and I try my ID, it's going to show a rejected access. So the system shows any time a, a card was used and whether they gained entry or the reason why they were rejected. But it doesn't necessarily say it was uh, Sally or Sue. Oh no, it says exactly who it is. Oh good. Yep. So I thought, I mean, I only use two buildings. I use this building and I use Ledge on a regular basis. And Ledge is a back door. And once I went through District the- District office. Central. It's compared to Ledge oh, Street. Oh yeah, School. on Ledge Street, Street. yes. <laughs> um, sorry. But I thought, I mean, and we always sign in when there's a book open. We come in the evening, there's no book open. 
we couldn't sign in if we wanted to on tonight's meeting. But I thought having that swipe gave more accuracy for who opened the door. And it, it's almost a benefit to swipe and to have access to the door in terms of safety. For the Certainly board. helps, but just taking it to like the school, school day, for instance, the hours of a school day, you know, if the fire alarm goes off, someone doesn't necessarily have access to a computer in that system to look it up, you know, fairly quickly versus just grabbing the, the sign-in right. book and going out with it. So. Right, right. The book would be in the fire, but again, when you go back and, and look through, you, you've got to double check. See, I thought that was an accurate at least double check because we always sign in when the book's available. In the evening, most of the time we come as board members, it's not available. Madam Mr. Chair, Mr. just a point of clarification. Um, all of our meetings are open door. In other words, we can't lock the door. No one can, can swipe it or not because it's an open meeting. So um, the doors are open during this time. Anyone can, you know, um, saunter in, so to speak. And the same thing at, at our, our administrative wing as well. The same thing with our subcommittee meetings as well. So it's always, because it's an open meeting, you know, you can't, there's no need to, to swipe because the doors are open. So it's just a policy where, um, in this case, having people like, you know, you use their ID badge would be a moot point. Mr. Kaufman? Yes, uh, I appreciate Mrs. Raymond's comments and I would agree that uh, to kind of maybe ask Dr. Mosley to uh, check in with his folks and then bring it to the policy committee. Yep. I think that's a, a uh, sound approach. Ms. O'Hensey. Thank you. Just as a follow-up to Dr. Mosley, most of the time the doors are open. There are times when it's not. There are times when you, you buzz on the doorbell and you have to literally hold it down to get access. Mistakes happen. If you have the badge and it works, you open up and you're in. Um, I've waited there for five minutes or more on occasion. Not every day. Most of the time they don't. But I'm just trying to understand why the need, you know, for a change occurred. And I, I know the change occurred. I just, uh, I just don't fully understand how the board is a threat, but so be it. Can I just add, uh, as a board member, I think it's more that we set an example that we do care about security. I, 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 I think it's modeled behavior. Boy, they're really serious about that. Even they swipe in. And I think that sends a message that everybody needs to be careful because I think we do have to tighten some things up. And I think there are some things that aren't real expensive but that we can do to um, improve security. I think everybody in this country has a heightened sense of security. And some of it's very expensive, but there's some stuff we can do, I think, that doesn't cost any money, and I think that's one thing that, that we could do to tighten up security. I think I think signs on the door. Please do not hold the door and let another individual in. I, that's That doesn't cost any money, but, you know, maybe a dollar for a sign that we can make. Yeah. But I, I think we do have to tighten up. I think as board members, if we do not take security seriously, I don't you know, other people would look at it, well, they don't care. But I think we could model and we set we set a standard, yeah, this is important to us. So that's my feeling. I I probably am more sensitive to it now after Florida. I, I think that was, that, that's still very raw. And I, I think you get comfortable sometimes. And I, you know, we haven't seen a lot of that around here. And I think it can happen any place in the country. So I, I don't have a problem at all. I would l like to say, though, it is not almost 920, and we have a non-public with Mr. Lassard. It's on safety, and to me, safety is more important than uh, the committee list, the Strategic Planning to Technology Committee, and I would like the public that have stayed here to have a chance to speak... Uh, to what if they want to speak so if people do not have a problem could we move to that so that we can be we can be briefed on the safety issues in our school district mr kaufman i understand the late hour and the interest of the board 
president to move things forward, but I just want to remind uh, the chair from last meeting, I had two items that were truncated. Um, I have no objection to moving Ms. Lessard's presentation tonight and, and kind of ending the meeting for the most part, except for his presentation. But for those people that have been on agendas before and have been truncated, in my case, two weeks in a row, mm -hmm. I ask that those items be brought forward not at the end of a meeting, where it'll be potentially truncated the third time, but rather it gets consideration. I had another item about a football discussion, football safety. Uh, I believe you referred that to committee, I'm sorry. It, yes, but the strategic I planning, I just want to point out that what we received in the packet did not include my proposal for strategic plan. So it seems like there's two conflicting, or actually I think they, they complement each other when you read them. So I ask that that be given full uh, access at the next board meeting, and we discuss both of those proposals. It, it will be on the agenda for the next meeting, but uh, football will not because no, that's going to be policy. No, you said policy. policy. Yes, okay, I recall. Thank Sorry. you. Okay, so we will move to public comment. If there's anybody that has any public comment? No. Okay. Board member comments. Is there anybody that has quick comments? Because I would like to get to Mr. Lassard. Um I just have a quick one. I want to thank uh, Hannah for doing uh, a front page article on uh, Katie's closet at Sunset Heights. I don't think most people in this in this city realize how much our schools do for our kids. That is not the only school that has Katie closet, Katie's closet. There are multiple schools. But I want to thank you for, for, for that story. It was an excellent story, and I appreciate it. I don't know if I can say anything on that, but um, I did do eight of them. Eight? In, in two oh. I, I did one on all of the schools that have them. Were they all on the front page? Um, some of them were in the reading section. Okay. Uh, that's all. Well, uh, Hannah, thank you. We can, what, what's happening in the audio booth? I'm sorry to interrupt. They can't hear you? So they wanted to hear that, what, what you just said. They just can't hear you from the back. Would you mind coming and just speaking in the mic, please? Sorry. No. You can quote yourself in the paper tomorrow. <laughs> right there. Sorry. Do I need to uh, no. say my name or anything? No. Sure. Okay. Uh, Hannah LeClaire. I'm with the Telegraph, and I just wanted to say that I did a um, story on all seven of the Katie's Closets in the district, and then an overview of the program itself. And um, after that, too, we found out that Penichuk is getting one also at um, hopefully by the end of the month. So um, that was cool. And we've also had a number of people reach out about how they want to donate and um. give more to the schools. So. Um, Thank you for acknowledging this story. Well, thank you so much because ha having taught at Title I school, I, I know the need and I really appreciate that. So thank you so much You're on welcome. behalf of all our families. Okay, looking for a motion. Do we adjourn and go into non-public or to go into non-public? Why don't we make a motion to go into non-public? Right. Right. Uh, I'm trying to figure out which, <laughs> on which section. Sorry, Mrs. Oden, I just, sorry about that, folks. I'm just concerned if we hear about board governance and we hear about limiting our meetings to two hours and cutting them even back to 90 minutes, and here we have a board meeting where we're pushing our third hour. We're at 9.45 p.m., and I, and I, I know that Mr. Lessard's here and he's waiting, it's a long time. And as was mentioned before, as it's getting late, and I'm just going to suggest that maybe we defer and maybe we just adjourn for the evening and resume at our next meeting, or if necessary, if the board feels there's an urgency to ask Ms. Lassard to come in at another time when we can all gather. Uh, but given the late hour, we don't know how long that presentation is going to be. We do like to ask questions and we want to be informed. I know when I met with him, there, there's a lot of material that he has to offer, and I'm just thinking we could find ourselves here until much later than we expect. So, Mr. Lassard, can you give us some idea of how 
how long your presentation would be? I think I can get through the material in under a half hour. Just all depends on okay. the amount of questions there are. Okay. Um, to me, it's important enough that I would I would like to hear Mr. Lassard speak to this. Um, uh, I I just think it's it's critical at this point. So um, I'll so I'll if, look, so look to other members of the board. Well, to, so to that point, so there's at least 15 or 20 minutes of questions at the end of that. So you're pushing at least 10:30. So I just want that to be a conscious choice. Okay. that the board is willing to make so that when you start considering these policy proposals that cut the meetings short and restrict things, you'll remember tonight that we haven't gotten through two full agendas. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'd, I'd just like to get to it. And I would say, uh, if you have questions, write them down and we will not take the 15, 20 minutes and maybe Mr. Lassard will come back again because security is top on our list. So uh, if we, we hear the presentation, I know that would make me feel better. Thank you. Oh, I have to go into non-public under. Um, I'm trying to figure out which, which one. Uh, there's the a special. I know there's a special way to go into non-public for security issues. It's probably number eight or nine, if you have the complete list. You would have the complete list. I know. In that book. Come on, we, we have the full list over here. You have the full list? It's, can you can you yeah. read it for me? It's RS, oh. it's RSA ninety one A three two G. Okay. And can you read it for us, please? Yep. Consideration of security related issues bearing on the immediate safety of security personnel. Oh no, that's for correctional. Never mind. It's in there. You're close. Yeah. Okay. I think it's I. I apologize. It's um. So I'd like to make a motion that we go into non-public session under RSA 91A-3 to uh, subset I, which says consideration of matters relating to the preparation for and the carrying out of emergency functions, including training to carry out some, such functions developed by local or state safety officials that are directly intended to thwart a deliberate act that is intended to result in widespread or severe damage to property or widespread injury or loss of life. Yes? Oh, second. On the motion to uh, go into non-public, um, Mr. Mosher? Yes. Ms. Oden? Yes. Mr. Kaufman? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Hohensey? Yes. Ms. Van Twyver? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. The motion carries. Um, motion to go on into non-public at 9.47 9 p.m.